Give me a second. You gotta give me a second here. Dude, I updated, I updated OBS. I updated OBS and now it's, uh, and now the stream deck doesn't work. This is the worst. So the three, I, the thing that like changes scenes quickly, it now, it now doesn't work. I, I updated OBS and the stream deck was fine. And now I just reopened everything and now it's gone. Hope you guys had a good Wednesday. Some wild Champions League matches going on. Thank you guys so much for the subs. Before I even freaking got here, Jeb, thank you for the Prime. Sour Boy, thank you for the Prime. Stealth Ops, thank you for the five months. Brady, thank you for the seven months. Snow Day, dude, where are you? Snow Day. Heplerm, thank you for the uh, 22 months and the subscriptions. The Runham, thank you so much for the five months. Shout out to Orlando Pirates. Dude, did they win? I think they were playing the Soweto Derby recently. Did they win? Your channel is not set to FM24. Oh, no kidding, dude. I wonder how long that was going. How many days is that? I haven't looked at that in forever. How many days was I not stream was i streaming on in, in football manager two days ago four days ago two weeks ago what I, I haven't played anything else in so long we won beat the chiefs three two hell yeah orlando pirates let's get it yes i was okay cool don't know why don't know what we were doing there then doc earl puffington thank you for the five months so I can't resubmit with uh, Twitch Prime no more. So take my money. Oh, no. Well, I mean, maybe yay. Maybe you've broken the shackles of Amazon Prime. You know that Chuck Norris got bit by a rattlesnake, but after five excruciating hours of pain, the snake died? So what do I think of the Barcelona youngsters? What happened with them? What happened with the Barcelona youngsters? I saw you guys talking about it earlier. I figure something happened with them. Is this the whole Pedri got hurt again thing? Do we know? No? Okay. Just brought it up and dipped. Uh, they won. Oh, yeah. No, I know another one. The Barcelona kids are, by the way, the reason that I think Barcelona's financial issues are particularly stupid, because all Barcelona has to do is for two years just don't buy anyone and give everybody in La Masia a chance. For two years, and they would be financially fine. All they have to do is resist the urge to, oh, give me one more Lewandowski. <sighs> like, you, they just have to resist that urge for two years. Two years might even be pushing it. They just have to resist that. But they need that hit. They need their, their, their president needs to get reelected, so he needs to buy somebody. And they go out and they're like, but what if? Or if you're really going to go into debt, if you're really going to go into debt, just take, uh, just take like Pedri and just start waving him under Manchester City's nose a little bit. Let him waft that in. Hey, man, 200 million. <laughs> Snowy, thank you for the 18 months. I've got beaver fever and I hope they never cure it. Up the Dorfers love that. Thank you for the 18 months supporting the stream, dude. Here, Wade, thank you for the four. Why do fathers take an extra pair of socks when they go golfing in case they get a hole in one?
That's a B right there. That's a good dad joke. That's a B. I'm giving that a B. So, here's the thing. You're saying Pedri's injury prone, right? If you put Pedri on the open market, the amount of money people would pay for him is insane. The amount of money that people would pay for Pedri is insane. It's insane. I mean, you get PSG, Man City, Bayern just threw $100 million for Harry Kane. I guess they're in the convo. Manchester United will pretend they're involved. Like, it'll be great. They won't ever do it, right? Because he's, he's in that category where they just don't want to... They don't want to do it, but... Yeah, I, look, I'm just I'm just saying that Barcelona should never go like bankrupt because they have such value in their team. They have they have so much value in their team. And they also they have such a good they have the best academy in the world. They still have the best academy in the world. There's something in the water. There's something in the way that their coaching their their coaches are set up and what they choose to teach at each age that's clearly just better than what everybody else is doing. So, use those kids, dude. They're good. Pineweb, thank you for the, the eight months. Oh, goodness. You almost have a Twitch child, Pineweb. Thank you for spending $5 of Jeff Bezos' money to support the stream. Kyle, thank you for the 16 months. Great DFB poke all video yesterday. I'm torn for their semi as I follow Kaiser Slaughter and after a family member was stationed at the Rammstein uh, base down the road and brought me some of their merch. That's cool. That's very cool. And Kaiser Slaughter would be an upset if they won the entire DFB poke all as well. So as fun as it would be to see uh, Zarbrook and like go all the way, if Kaiser Slaughter goes all the way, it's not not an upset. You know what I mean? It's still an upset. It's just less of an upset. There's three teams not in the first division in the semifinal of the DFB poke all. The German Cup, crazy. I love that. How's it going? It's going great, FM Wonder Kids. Good to see you. Going great. Actually, there is there is a bout of concern in Camp Zealand as we prepare for the half marathon this weekend. I played my my men's league soccer match uh, yesterday, last night, deep in the deep in the mists of the evening, and uh, it, it's indoor, so very active. Um, we we ended up getting destroyed, we lost ten to four. I uh, I did some brilliant goalkeeping, obviously, because I I gave up ten goals, but as a result, I was I was working. I was working a lot. I, I was I was running all over the place, right? It was a very high intensity uh, interval, and I felt fine, you know, tired and sore, but fine. I get home, I'm walking around, and uh, the top of my foot starts to hurt. And I'm like, that's curious. That's interesting. That's new. And then I'm 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 laying in bed, and it starts getting worse. And I'm like, ah. Oh, no. So, top of my foot hurts. Not insignificantly. And I'm running a half marathon in four days. So, we'll see if uh, I'm just loading up on painkillers to get through it. I, I don't know um, what it is. Hopefully, it's just like a cramp or muscle sore. They rub some dirt on it. Ah. And kicked yourself? I heard a rumor that Z only gives up world-class goals. Not true. That was pretty bad last night. But it was fun. Indoor is just really fun. It's just so chaotic and a good time. Injections for a big match? Yeah. I say, no, I, I think it'll be fine. It feels just like the top of my foot is sore. But it definitely, like, if I want to be comfortable, I have to walk with a limp. And I was like, that's probably not good. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I, I need to get some 20 physios on staff. Yo, thank you for the 30 months. Three putt Monty. Run using the bottom of your feet to avoid the pain. This man is a genius. Love the way his brain works. Love the way his brain works. 
Oh, I'm glad we found that clip. That's beautiful. <clears throat> the manager suggests I go to a specialist. Yeah, I think I'll be fine. We're running that half marathon. We're running that half marathon, brother. It's a bruise. Yeah, I mean, it's just sore. I just did a lot of... Oh. Oh. Don't run that marathon. Uh, dude, I, the, the actual New York marathon, I ran the last 16 miles with a double thigh cramp. Okay, I will finish the race. <laughs> Delicious. Thank you for the two months. Why do crocodiles have eyes so that they can hide in cherry trees? You don't believe it? Did you ever see a crocodile in a cherry tree? No. I've never seen a crocodile in a cherry tree. But I don't know if I believe it. I know I I I I read it wrong. It was red eyes. They have red eyes. That that's because they're supposed to be hiding in cherry trees, apparently. Which is why it's very well known. One of the most dangerous jobs on the planet, like right next to Alaskan fishermen. Cherry picker. But you said he wouldn't do a marathon again? It's a half marathon. My friend uh, wanted to run it, and I was like, screw it, I'll do it with you. So I put in for the raffle and got selected, naturally. And here we are. So you play an FM today? Nah, dude, the game category is just for show. I was just trying to bait you in. It worked. High fives, chat. Have I talked about Zarbrugen? No. I'll tell you what I want to talk about, though. Is this friggin' penalty? Anybody else see this? So I've never... I don't know what this music is, but I've never seen this. Watch the ball. So this is Lotaro's pin, which, of course, he missed to send Atletico to the quarterfinal of the Champions League. Now you're caught up on the lore. All right. Watch the ball. Just watch the I I actually don't blame Lotaro for missing this at all. Just watch the ball. I swear to you, the ball moves as if there is a dude under the field with a pole who just pokes it a little bit. I swear to you. Watch the ball. Not yet. He's still licking his chops. Here he goes. Lautaro Martinez. Watch the ball. Watch it. Watch it. That ball moves, bro. Like, there is literally a dude sitting under the field with a pole, like... The ball moves. You see it move. <laughs> I don't blame him for missing that. That ball literally jumps up. Dude, well done, Barrett. That sounds like an awesome save. Congratulations. So... I've watched it a bunch of times. The first couple times I watched this, I was like, dude, that's like nefarious. I don't know what's happening. Now, what I want you to do, you know, I, I've, I've conducted a forensic study here. What I want you to do is watch his left foot. The literally, because of the way the field is set up, he plants his left foot in exactly the wrong spot, and that's what causes... That's what, like, because the grass, I don't know, there's something weird with the grass. Because right, it's right when his left foot hits. Watch. It's like he stepped on a rug, and the rug rippled. And it jumps the ball up. It's so unlucky. But it's his foot. Skips the ball up, and then he just gets under it.
Yeah, see, it's not even the only penalty it happened on. This this penalty spot was scuffed. That ball moved too, but it moved sideways and didn't jump up, so he was still able to get a hold of it. But I mean, it, I mean, the, the the margin's so fine when you're taking a penalty that the ball jumping up like that. So I I don't blame I I don't blame him. Like that obviously sucks that he missed it, but yeah, I mean, and, 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 and this guy scored too, right? He scored too. Apparently, it happened to Alexi Sanchez. That didn't really uh didn't really happen. I think Latar just got really unlucky with what his plant foot did because that ball jumps up on him. And, and, and no wonder he got under it. Uh, the ball literally jumped off the ground. Simeone had that planned. I wouldn't be surprised. Who picked? Okay, I did not watch the penalty shootout live. I was in a, a, a sesh recording my latest diss track. Um, who decided what in the penalties were going to be taken on? Well, I know toy. Uh, I know it's a. I know it's a coin toss. Enter decided what in to take the pen on. Well, I'm asking which team won the coin toss and got to decide what in they kicked that. I know that a coin toss decided which team got to choose. But if Atletico Madrid got to choose, which doesn't sound like they did, so Lautaro was the one that picked. All right, so hear me out. Hear me out. Okay, we've got Simeone, right? We know he's a master of the dark arts. Dude is like Voldemort, okay? He sets the grass up like this on both penalty spots, but, but, well, Atletico's taking the penalties from the same time, like from the same spot. How do they avoid this? He tells them where to plant their foot that the ball doesn't move. All right, break out your tinfoil hat. I want to see all five Atletico. I want to see all the penalties. Because if they, if all of theirs were like Alexi Sanchez, where, yeah, the grass moved, but the ball didn't, like they knew where to put their foot, because that's where you got to put your foot right there, and the ball doesn't move. Right, but if you set up the penalty spot in a way where if you put your foot in certain areas, that ball's jiggling around like a jigglypuff trying to evolve. That's a huge advantage. And if and here's another thing. If you're not doing that, if you are not doing that, I would start doing it. That is a monster home field advantage. They only shot four. Right when I said five, I was like, they might only shot four. So they only shot four. I want to see all four of them. So get that 10 for a hat on and agree with me here. Because home field advantage, you tell your guys where to plant their foot so the ball doesn't move. And then you got the ball jumping around on multiple enter penalty takers. Thoughts on Mason uh, to Barcelona, Z? Some incompetent United board members flew to Spain for that. And if they can play for Barcelona, then why not for United? Uh, look, I to be honest, I don't like... <laughs> I, I, I don't think he should be playing, so... Uh, that that's that. It would make me uncomfortable if he played for a team I supported. I, I, I you know, I'm not the person that's making those decisions, though. But I, I know that they're really embracing that. Have you heard that the, the Super League could find some new uh, name because the Super League name is already trademarked for the Dana Super League? Yes. Yes. Did you guys hear about this? Is this in the what's happening section? Yes. It is the what's happening section on the Discord. It is there. This is so the Danish Super League. Freaking. Oh, uh, the Danish Super League won a lawsuit in the EU forbidding the Super League to register their name as a trademark. Oh, yes. Oh, dude. It was in the what's happening part of the Discord right here. That's a Reuters title. Shout out to Denmark, man. Possible future European Super League will not be able to register the Super League as a trademark. You know the kind of funny thing? That probably helps them because they were never going to be able to pull off anything under the name of the Super League, ever. 
They were never going to be able to pull it. Who posted that? Thargoff, thanks for throwing that in the uh, what's happening. But, like, they were never going to be able to pull off anything under the name the Super League because it had been so conclusively tarnished. Their only hope was to change the name and try and change the way it was perceived a little bit. Because basically what they used to be proposing a closed league, but now all they're proposing is Champions League. They're proposing the Champions League, but calling it the same thing. So it doesn't really matter. The Denmark rising up. Yeah, Mega League. Der Superligen. La Liga Magnifico. The Burger King League of Friendship. That's my official proposal. The Super League. That's amazing. I freaking Denmark, man. Freaking Denmark. What else is in the what's happening? What's happening in the what's happening? German national team call up. What? What? Okay. Go away. Union takes criminal action against football club over widespread abuse of rights. Oh, who's that? The players union is suing somebody? Are you going to make me click on the article? All right, fine. Oh, Olympia Lublana? What the? It's like an actual team. They're accused of bullying, harassment, and humiliation of four players. I actually watched this. This is the team. Um, this is the team that I watched while I was in the Faroe Islands. They played the Faroese team and got smoked. <laughs> Maybe it's because they were bullying their own players. They filed criminal charges against the club and its management, accusing them of leaving the players out of training sessions or camps in an attempt to get them to leave or sometimes to sign new contracts. Okay, wait a second. Doesn't Barcelona already do that? Didn't they do this to that Braithwaite guy? I mean, we all do this in FM. I thought it was going to be something worth, wor worse than that. This is not the first time I've heard of a club doing this. I'm fairly certain this is what Barcelona was doing with Braithwaite or whatever. I mean, Real Madrid did this to... Or Manchester United did this to David Beckham, didn't they? Some are like... Or was it Real uh, uh, United or Real Madrid? I can't remember. I watched the doc and I already forgot. Yeah, Kylian Mbappe was banned from the first team for 24 days at PSG. That's like happening again now, too. The French Players Union has alleged that 180 of its represented players has been put under illegal pressure by a club. So why is why is a why is Olympia Ljubljana getting like prosecuted criminally for four of them? Were they like pointing and laughing at them and that made it illegal or something? But I feel like I, I'm, uh, yeah, Jaden Sancho is another great example. It's literally what happened to Jaden Sancho. Shimmy, thank you for the seven months. Yeah, Pape Matarsar, apparently. Apparently, I'm going to jail for what I've been doing to Pape Matarsar on my, with my Tottenham team, dude. Trying to yeet him out a window. Hey, look. Anybody can adopt Pape Matarsar. Oh, it's it's because of a Slovenian labor law. Oh, it's a, okay. So it's a local national labor law that they're running afoul of. That makes sense. Well, that's not as crazy as I initially thought. Although the idea of a club being sued for the way it's treated four players, the fact that it treated them really similarly to um, the fact that it treated them really similar to the way like a lot of other clubs treat players is kind of funny. Because that's a very good example of, like, I, well, they did it. Why can't we do it? <laughs> Liverpool owners FSG appoint Michael Edwards as chief executive. Where did he come from? 
I know you guys posted this and what's happening, but I, I, I don't remember. Um, I heard about this, but I didn't. I don't know anything about Michael Edwards. Do you guys know anything about Michael Edwards? Like why this is uh, important? The please don't bully people law. Honestly, not a bad law, dude. Not a bad law. Task Force Mikey, thank you for the 14 months, brother. Who's that? Liverpool before? Bring him back after Klopp announced he'd be stepping down. Further detailed discussions about his role took place in March. One of the most formidable executive talents in world football. Okay. So he's going to be like the director, I guess, of football. He joined uh, Liverpool in 2011, became sporting director in 2016, left in 2022. Why do you leave? He turned down a number of offers to return to the game, which included uh, roles to run Chelsea and United. Smart. <laughs> His new role at FSG will include a restructure of football operations, which will include bringing in a new sporting director. Oh, so he's like president. They've been without a sporting director since Jürgen Schmatke's exit in January. Richard Hughes will leave his role at Bournemouth as the Bournemouth technical director at the end of the season is under consideration. Okay. FSG's looking at buying a second club. Liverpool's building out that city group farm system, baby. FSG's buying a second club. Ew! But this was the best. I, I made, We made a Zealandism about this. If you don't follow Zealandism, you're missing out. But this is the best thing that happened on, uh, I think it was Wednesday, right? This is the best thing that happened on Wednesday. Of course, we weren't streaming yesterday, so we couldn't talk about it. Jordan Willis, thank you for the five months, dude. I appreciate it. Having she can barely afford the Red Sox. Hey, man. If I've learned anything... From actually following this stuff, you don't actually need the money to buy the club. You just need collateral. All you got to do is be like, hey, man, we own other teams. And they're like, oh, no way. Did I miss Bournemouth Luton? Yeah, I did. But even though I know that Bournemouth was down three goals, I think, and came back to win, this was the best thing that happened. Because Zarbrücken is a third division team third division that is now in the semi-final of the german cup was it tuesday evening it was tuesday evening so fine yesterday was bournemouth luton tuesday evening was zarbrucken i zarbrucken has beaten now zarbrucken has now beaten three Bundesliga opponents on their way, including Bayern Munich. This team beat Bayern freaking Munich, chat. And they, and I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Was Bayern Munich starting the local YMCA? No, they weren't. Bayern Munich, let me show you the lineup, was starting... <clears throat> Eric Maxim Chupo Moting, Zane, Muller, Matis Tell, Yeshua Kimmich, Kim Min Jay, Alfonso Davies, Matthijs Delict, and Manuel Neuer. And they lost to a team that is mid table in the third division. Chupo Moting's giga bad. You're telling me that if you put Chupo Moting in the third division, he wouldn't be the leading goal scorer, right? He wouldn't be the best player in the third division of Germany by a mile, right? We're talking about a guy that's played for Bayern and PSG, Cameroon starting striker. This dude is, he's good. I know he's not, he's kind of a meme because he always pops up on these great teams, but they even brought Jamal Musiala, Serge Gnabry, and Kingsley Coman off the bench. This was a legit Bayern team at Zarbrücken and they lost. They had the lead early and they gave up a 96th minute goal, which was awesome. I think we watched it on stream at the time. And that wasn't it. 
because their next match, they played Eintracht Frankfurt. This is an Eintracht Frankfurt team that two years ago won the Euros, a team that is competing in Europe based off of their league finish in Bundesliga last season. While they're not Bayern, they're still one of the seven best teams in Germany. And they beat them. 2-0. The red card was after the two goals, chat. 2-0. And then the next match, which was the one on Tuesday, they come from behind again to beat Borussia Mönchengladbach. Three Bundesliga opponents, Zarbrücken, who are comfortably mid-table in the third division. Yeah, the, st the story doesn't end there. They beat three Bundesliga teams. There's only 18 Bundesliga teams, Chad. Three of them got knocked out of this freaking cup by Zarbrücken. And now the four teams left are Dusseldorf, Kaiserslautern, Bayer Leverkusen, of course, and Saarbrücken. Saarbrücken plays Kaiserslautern, and Bayer Leverkusen plays Dusseldorf. Now, Kaiserslautern, here's the real fun thing. Kaiserslautern's in the second division. Dusseldorf is in the second division. There's only one Bundesliga team left. One in the semifinal of the German Cup. There is one Bundesliga team left. Yeah, they're at home. Because if you're in the lower division, apparently this was explained to me after I posted the video on uh, on Zealandism. If you were in the lower division, you automatically get to host in the German Cup. So Saarbrücken has been playing all of these matches at home. I'm sure that has helped. And they get to play Kaiserslautern at home in the semifinal. And uh, I, 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 maybe that's not true. Because Leverkusen's at home against Dusseldorf, apparently. Maybe that's not true, like, once you get to a certain point. I don't know. Oh, you host if you're in the third league or lower. So Dusseldorf being in the second league, they don't get, like, priority. Okay. The funny thing is, Zarbrücken hasn't played a team in its division since it got to the first round proper. I was looking it up. Their first match was against Karlsruhe. Karlsruhe is in the second division. This is the first round proper of the DFB Pokal. Zarbrücken beat a second division team, three straight Bundesliga teams. Now they play another second division team trying to get to the final. And they are not like blow away good in the second division. I said they were mid-table. They're very mid-table. They're in ninth. Like they're just, uh, they're just there. Yeah, that's true. If they win, if Zarbrücken finds a way, right? If Zarbrücken finds a way to actually win, right? We're down to the last four. They would be playing in Europe while playing in the third division of Germany. And let me tell you, I don't know if I've ever wanted anything more than that. Because they're not going to get promoted this year. Unless they go on a hell of a run at the end of the season, they're not going to get promoted this year. They would win the cup, stay in the third division, play Europa League from the German third division. I know they I know they have to win the final. And it, is that likely? No. Bayer Leverkusen's looking at this draw going, wow, we've got the easiest cup draw of all time. Leverkusen, of course, the unbeaten leaders of the Bundesliga now have to play you know, a second division team and at worst in the final, a second division team or Zarbrook in the unkillable third division team. Now, if, Bayer's, if Bayer Leverkusen's only domestic loss of the entire season was a loss to Zarbrook in the cup final, that would be one of my favorite moments in footballing history. So, no, the playoffs in Germany, the way they work, as was reiterated to me, uh, is that there's like a promotion relegation playoff. So, like, Dresden would play the 16th team from the second division to see if they deserve to go up. But Zarbrücken is 10 points out of the playoff spot with, like, six matches left. 
Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry. There are 10 matches left. Third Bundesliga apparently goes from 18 to 20. So 10 matches left to try and gain what would be seven points if they win their match in hand. There'd be nine matches left to gain seven points to get to the playoff. But right now, the middest of mid tables, Saarbrücken. Video coming about Zarbrücken? I already made one, came out yesterday on the Zealandism channel. Hell yeah, brother. I think a Zealandism video actually came out after I started the stream today. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what Regensburg's doing here. I did notice that. Two points in their last five matches and they're still in second. It's looking spursy to me. Regen Regensburg is uh, building the bottle factory right now. They got nine matches left to try and hang on, but it, they must have definitely been top of the league for a long time. Oof. They have two wins in their last eight games. They lost a... Yeah, we're talking about a team in Zarbrücken. This is, this is my favorite. Zarbrücken plays and is behind Dortmund's second team in the league. And they have gone farther than actual Dortmund in the DFB Pokal. But they are behind Dortmund's reserve team in the third division. It's the magic. It's the magic of football. It's the magic of football, lads. The magic of football. And then, of course, we've got, we've got big time. European showdowns today, like a million European games today going on all over the place in the Conference League, in the Europa League. We got some that are kicking off in like an hour. Benfica Rangers is a banger. Milan's should win over Slavia Prague. Marseille's already got the 4-0 on Villarreal. West Ham Freiburg is 1-0 to Freiburg. Spicy. Federbache should be okay against Royal Union Singawa. Fiorentina in Maccabi Haifa. Fiorentina should see that out. I think they're at home in this leg with a one goal lead. Yeah. They're playing at the Duomo. Dinamo Zagreb leads Palk Thessaloniki, Greek League in the mud, Servette and Victoria Pilsen for a big old spot in the round of 16 of the Conference League. All on the line. That's nil nil. I think the match of the early window, though, Rangers-Benfica. 2-2 in the Europa League. You got a nice old firm setting at the, the Ibrox. Beautiful. The European football of the Ibrox. That's my match. That, that's my match of the round. Now, West Ham is at London Stadium. I, I would probably... Look, okay, my predictions. AC Milan, um, Marseille. Obviously. I yeah. This is a tough pick, chat. Who, who are you leaning? Do you think West Ham can overturn the goal deficit? <clears throat> I'm thinking... Hammers 3-1. You know what? I'm feeling this off a of vibe, but I actually think Freiburg holds on. I think we get like a 1-1 one -one or a 0-0. Nil -nil. I think Freiburg holds on. I think Freiburg gets it done. I, I mean, West Ham going through would be really fun. Having West Ham in Europe's really fun, but I think Freiburg holds on and gets to the round of 16 of the Europa League. That's what they're playing for. Fenerbahce is basically already through. I'm picking so at Dinamo Zagreb up a couple of goals, but they are going to Greece. I'm going to say Dinamo Zagreb holds on. Uh, Fiorentina, I, I know people have, I've been getting messages. Maccabi Haifa's got game. They've got game. But Fiorentina at home with a goal advantage, I'm not picking against that. I'm not picking against that. 
I think it's Fiorentina. I know nothing about Victoria Pilsen or Servette. I'm going to go Swiss League here. I'm going to take Servette on the road to get the win. I'm going Swiss League. Servette, please. So that's the early window. And we do have some late window matches. Of course, Leverkusen and Kauerbach, which is 2-2 going to Germany, which is hilarious. But there's no way they bottle that. Liverpool's good on Sparta Prague. Brighton is needs the ridiculous comeback against Roma. I'd be so here for that. Villa Ajax, Brugge Mold. Villa Park should be should be enough. Swedish team getting round to 16 in Europe would be fun. Lille's basically already through, and then, of course, Tel Aviv just obliterated Olympiacos. <coughs> Are we just taking a look here? We're orienting ourselves for what's going down today. You know, we're taking a look at how, how it's all going down. And then the German national team selection, you guys also threw that in the what's happening. Apparently, this is a very weird team. No, I, well, one, he's got four goalkeepers. Really? I know it's 26 players, but really? Tony Cruz is back, gun to one. Thomas Muller, okay, he still made it. Kai Havertz, my boy, Fuel Krug. So what's weird about this team? Who's missing? I guess, like, no Serge Gnabry. Uh, defense, defense is weird. Yeah, Nicholas Besta. I didn't think he was at that level yet. They still have Rudiger. Rom's kind of been there a while. No, yeah, that, the defense. Okay, yeah, there's no Hummels, no Schlotterbach. Is there not a single winger? Dude, what the hell? Is he playing a narrow 5-3-2? <laughs> I mean, I guess Havertz could play uh, wing. I don't really know where Denny Zundov plays. Jan Nicholas Best is a wing back. But they have the fact that they've listed him in defense makes me believe that's not a striker. Okay. He's a East Stuttgart striker. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Thank you. I mean, Moosey Allen and Havertz are similar players positionally that they can, like, play across the front line if you need them to. I'll be, I'll be totally honest. I have never heard the name Robert Andrik in my life. And he's in the German national team. That's the only name on this team that I've never heard. But I've never heard that name. He's a uh, Leverkusen 6. Okay. Andrik's not new. You never know where the gaps in your ball knowledge pop up. Why are the Bucks trending? What? I mean, let's be honest, chat. I kind of like that. Thank you guys for throwing the stuff and what's happening. I kind of like calling up a national team that way, especially considering how freaking disappointing Germany has been recently. I totally get it. The bunch of attacking players just ain't it. Although the defense is a little weirder, but. I mean, with with as bad as the German national team's been recently. Why not? Germany is one of those countries with a real deep national team pool. Oh, yeah. Champions League. We're jumping right into a massive Champions League match. Who's with me? Huzzah. They have to come good soon. I mean, yeah, it's Germany, dude. They're they're going to be fine. Like, Germany is always going to have one of the most talented teams in the world unless something really fundamentally changes about, like, the world of football. They're always going to have one of the most talented teams that you can have. And so... I, I don't... Like, if I was German, right, I wouldn't be worried about the national team. 
Because if you're German, you have the rare feeling of like every time you show up, you have a shot to win. Doey can play center back, right? A little bit. Okay. Skoda, Che, Kichi, Seca, Indra, Guerra, Marcelo, Enrique for Basuma, uh, uh, Vandevin, Inacio, Phillips, and Lewis. Rosales is suspended. Frat. Hey, Jetsu, thank you for the four months, dude. Thank you for supporting the stream. I'll reset the uh I'll reset the capture card. Fine. Fine. Paco, that is friggin' awesome. Excellent choice for a child name. All right. Now it's not as dark anymore. You can see everything. Did I see Otani's wife reveal? Stop it. He did not do a wife reveal. Less gaming. Thank you for the two months. I appreciate it. Thank you for supporting the stream. And Yahoo Shua. Thank you for the two years. Thank you for supporting the stream for a long time. Favorite World Cup shirt from the ones that got unveiled. I really like Belgium's. That, bl that baby blue, that's pretty sick. I don't know if that's a World Cup shirt or just for the Euros, but that's a pretty sick one. I really like that one. I'm also not like a huge kit guy, so I don't really know what makes a good kit. I just like that one. Okay, so. Otani's wife reveal. So Shohei Otani, he's like the best, he's the best baseball player in the world. And he recently announced that he got married. And it was one of the fun, because he's Japanese. It was one of the funniest things I've ever seen because he, he we announced that he got married and people are like, well, who's your wife? And he's like, oh, it's, she's just a nice, normal Japanese girl. And everybody was like, you imagine <laughs> Shohei's wife watching that? Like, I'm a what? <laughs> but it was like, it struck me as a very weird, it was like a very weird sentence, right? Because Shohei's very, he's very, very, very private about his life. And then apparently he just did a wife reveal because nobody had any idea what she looked like. Nobody had any idea it was like in a relationship or whatever. But the idea of doing a wife reveal, just so strange. What, what timeline are we on? Where you've got baseball players doing wife reveals. No, I, I think Shohei's a good guy, but I, I do think that the way he had to handle that, like in Japanese culture, you know, like he wasn't, he, he was, he had to really make it clear, like, well, I didn't marry a model. I married a nice, normal Japanese girl, you know, like it, it is, it, it's an interesting cultural translation, but then the idea like has to unveil like the first lady of baseball. All right, this is a massive Champions League game we are about to play. It's always weird kicking off the stream with a huge game, but this is an absolutely massive game. Because if we win this match, I would say we're basically guaranteed to go through in the top eight because we have an away tilt against Antwerp in our, or Antwerp in our last two matches that I we just have to win. So really, the swing match is our home performance against AC Milan here. I'm going to take pressure off the boys. <sighs> All right, are you ready? Are you freaking ready? Oh, shoot. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, I didn't have the song ready. Okay, there we go. Oh, God. Give me the anthem.
the champions! <clears throat> All right, let's do it. Oh, God, that was loud. Oh. <clears throat> Easy. Easy money. Uh, any predictions? <laughs> Dude, that's a baller move. Be like, yeah, I actually have my wedding next week, but they don't even know. So I'm going to bet them that I'm going to get married before them and then just win. Tender steak, that is, that is amazing. Well, you just end up in a conversation like, hey, I might be able to make a little money here. I bet you guys will get married before you. Oh, by the way, uh, my wedding, the wedding invitation's in the mail. Just thought I'd let you know. Like right after they agree to the bet, like, oh, you guys coming next week? Love to have you there. Be a great time. Insider trading. Is that is true. That is insider trading. Seca. Oh, that's offside. That's very offside. Good thing he missed. Want to get that out of our system here early. Good thing he missed it. If you had to marry a former Tottenham coach, who would it be? Very good question. Demands an answer. Uh, did Warnock ever manage uh, Tottenham? Thargov, thank you for the 31 months. You guys are sleeping on Harry Redknapp, though. That's what you're sleeping on, Redknapp. Dark High, thank you for the 42 months. Oh, but, dude, Ange. Hey, all right, I don't call him Big Ange for nothing. You know what I'm saying? He's got a huge personality. Honestly, Ange seems like a great dude to hang out with. Ange is in the conversation. Me and Neil Warnock and Ange Postacoglu hanging out. Dude, why? They should have a goal. Jokes aside, we're getting cooked. That is such a bad header. That was my header, right? Gonzalo, Jesus. Ew. Drago Jaguta. Oh, there you go. There you go. We got freaking cleared off, Shikichi. Are you serious? P-Fong, thank you for the two years. This is a very, um, very not fun match for us right now. I'm straight up not having a good time. Raph, that's a, that's a pen for us on the other end of the field. That's a good point. Is it when you were is it when they were managing or right now? 
I think it's when they were managing. That makes it a fairer conversation. Which Tottenham manager would you marry when they were managing? You're getting that version of them. Uh -uh. All right, let's get it. Simone Scudder, Ashley Phillips. I, I kind of yelled at the boys. We did not have control over that uh, that match. Oh, that's a good pass. Why? That touch was so bad. You were offside and still got blocked. We've had some of the match momentum, but it's been a pretty stale performance. XG is closer than you'd think it should be, but they've been better than us. All right, come on. This is a good spot. Somebody show. Oh, Indrik. Shikichi! Oh, the big moment! It's George the Hammer! George Shikichi! Throw in Zopi. We take that cheeky ball from Indrik. 5-7 George Shikichi dominating on the back post. Dude, he's got three jumping reach, but I don't care, man. He keeps winning headers. I don't know what, I don't know what he's on. I don't know how he wins the headers. I don't ask any questions. It's probably some performance enhancing drugs involved. I'm not asking. Okay. Cause he's delivering the goods. He wins headers. Hector Gamera, you are in. Rejevich and Marcelo Enrique swap into the midfield where we have not had a good performance so far. We are monitoring the possibility of shifting our formation back as well. That might be wise once we get to 75. Oh, oh, but a second goal would also be wise. Ooh, near post. Banger. All right, all right, we're using that. We're using that. Change. I know I won't be leaving here. I know. All right, Sek is losing his mind, so we're going to go ahead and uh, advance playmaker this. Uh, Indrik is the inside forward there. Rejevic, Shikichi. Anybody struggling for fitness? No, we've got we've got a good team all around. Everybody, the vi Everybody's passing the vibe check. Everybody's passing the vibe check. Okay. That's great news. Constantelius, I trust you to be the playmaker for the last 15 minutes of this game. I love Bellarmino Seca, but he's tired, and Giannis, I need... Vandevin, really? I mean, not for this match. We can get 12 minutes out of Doug that uh, that can get us through, but missing Mickey Vandevin for the December run is going to be tough. I love Mickey Vandevin, but he is not somebody that stays fit all the time. We're doing an excellent job of killing this off, man. This is really fun. Let's go! That's what I'm talking about, dude. No highlights after one highlight after our goal, and it was our corner. Excellent performance by this 4-3-3 to see that out. Rajovic, that's fine. There's no threat up there. Give Indrik a chance to chase it. Oh, great step by Captain Rico Lewis. That's a huge win, chat. That is a huge win. Let's go. I'm very, yeah, we weren't at our best, especially in that first half, but we got the three points in the Champions League. We are literally top of the Champions League table with two matches to go. We get no bonus points for that. Well, that's huge because one of our last two matches is United away. So that's, you know, gravy. Oh, he broke his ribs. What were they playing with bats out there? Dude took a tire iron to the ribs from an AC Milan player. He broke his ribs. Just focus on the recovery, Mickey. That is a uh, that's a tough injury. Chikichi also just got suspended. That guy gets cards like it's his job. Really incredible how much he picks up cards. Ooh. Ooh. I know it says average intake, but that's a striker and a goalkeeper that are apparently both very good. 
He says the goalkeeper is a great prospect, which is nice. Hellos? And the striker's a fine prospect. And an attacking midfielder we should keep a close eye on. Okay. Uh, we've got some traveling to do. I think we've got United. It's a brutal uh, two-match uh, two stretch here. I hated it. Thanks. All right, we're going to try and recover our team as much as we can. Uh, Doug's going to play over there. Not Sar, dear Lord. Not Sar. Whatever you do, don't make me play Sar. Okay. Huh. Got it. Rest set up. We need to try and get to Manchester United away with some energy. Isaac Babati, you are not even playing. You're like recovering from a shattered leg in the preseason. Please do not get the rest of my team sick. You listen to me, son. You have one job, and that's to not get people sick. Oh, easy stretch to start the stream. Easy. Chump change. Then Bradford City away in the uh, League Cup quarterfinal, but that we can rotate. We should be able to rotate and dominate. Do we like him? No, we don't. Okay. Mastin Tuano wants to secure a permanent move away from the club. Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I can see that. Oh, he dropped it. No way. <laughs> we'll still sell him in January because we're never going to make him happy again. The dress joke, B plus, Jair. Loved it. Thank you for the nine months. Thank you for supporting the stream. Congrats on your dad joke, which you've earned because now you have a Twitch child. Nine months. Very well done. Did I play Arsenal yet? Yes, we lost 1-0 away. Bitter pill to swallow, but we have one more shot at them at home this year. And they've won the league four straight years, but they're certainly not winning it this year, so. <sighs> Manchester United on the road. Do, do, do. Oh, well, oh. yeah, those guys aren't sharp yet. City play. They lost. Oh, the opportunity beckons. City lost at Wolves on an own goal and an 87th minute goal by NCSO. So if we win at Manchester United, we are a point off the top of the table with a massive dub in the bag over, you know, it's a six pointer. I mean, United's two points off us right now. So this isn't a big deal at all then. No, this is uh, totally fine. Totally easy, easy, breezy. Inacio, if you give me a friggin' fatigue thing after this match, I'm going to lose my mind. All right. You got to be able to play two matches in three days once every, you know, every few years. Okay. <sighs> I know they didn't drop a point for the, any match in the first 10 weeks. Look, their bubble is burst. They're playing really poorly in the Champions League as well. Like, they're kind of being found out. I don't know if they have some injuries or I really don't care. I couldn't give less of a hoot. But we are uh, we're more fit than United. We're going to come out and play. We're coming out and play positive ball. 
We're starting our uh, our crack team here with Shikichi and Seka and Indrik and Simone Skoda, Javi Guerra, Eves Basuma. Doig gets the start at left back because we have broken ribs on Mickey Vandevin all of a sudden. So he will be missed. <sighs> okay. Uh, hmm. Enjoy the match. Play your own game. I don't want to put any pressure on you. I believe in you. The Theater of Dreams. Anthony Rashford, Don Lee, Baldanzi. Manchester United have been making a charge. They nearly won the league last year. They finished just behind Arsenal, who have won four straight. But Arsenal's in sixth. It looks like there will be fifth. Looks like there will be a new king this year. And the battle for that is ongoing. This could be one of the matches that decides the entire season. Let's freaking get it, boys! I want a good showing. I'm coming out. I'm trusting the team. We're going aggressive. We're playing our system. We're playing our aggressive system. I'm trusting the, uh, the fact that our legs are a little bit fresher than theirs, particularly in the midfield and on the wings. They're coming out of their European match, too. They didn't hit those rests like I did, you know. Oh, good spot. Seca. Rosales! Oh, it's in! Couldn't keep it out. He couldn't keep it out. Too hard of a header from Rosales. Although they probably score that as an own goal. Oh, no. Ninety minutes. Ninety minutes. Ninety. Ninety minutes. Don't collapse on Donley. That opened up their wing. Ninety minutes. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. It was Anthony just absolutely choking this. My line was terrible. We tried to step up, but only on half the team here. So we had Inacio and, and Doig in, in not working with Lewis and Rosales at all. Anthony choked it, and then Rashford shot, blocked by Rico Lewis, the captain. But that was, I mean, troubling. They're getting in that space in front of our back line, and it is causing serious problems. So what I want is a ball winner on defend. I want Eves Basuma to be a little bit more aggressive trying to take away that space. Oh, yes. Basuma. Doig! Skoda Shirley! All the set pieces for Tottenham Hotspur! Brilliant! Oh, yes. Old Trafford is in danger now. Unnecessarily good finish there from Skoda. Had the entire goal. Nearly missed it. Daniel, thank you for the five months. Thank you for supporting the stream, dude. Enjoy your lack of ads and your silver bacon next month. <laughs> spooky, spooky stuff. We are getting amazing. I, I, we're not seeing them as part of the highlight, but we're getting amazing set piece chances. 
Well, you've had a couple of free kicks right on the edge of the box. I think Endrick and Shikichi are doing a really good job of the dribbling. That would be my guess. Dribbly boys doing their thing. Hi from Romania. What's up, dude? Stream Hopper, thank you for the tier one. Thanks for supporting the stream, brother. Enjoy being a part of the Cool Kids Club now. And of course, your lack of ads. No, 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 no. Leave him. Oh, Rico said, give me those cookies. They're mine. It's like a bully on the playground. Oh, that is such a bad ball by Endrick. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? The one thing that is opening us up more than anything. Leave him alone. All right? We do not need to send three people to him. Okay? We don't. Leave him alone. Just leave him alone. One guy is enough, man. Just, that's, that's how they're scoring their goals. One terrible ball by Endrick. We should have been traveling towards the goal. What are you doing? Stop. Leave Don Lee alone, man. He's just dropping in. Wingers are wide open. Our line is a disaster. I yell at the center backs. We yell at Javi Guerra. He hadn't done diddly squad. You're one of the best midfielders in the world. The hell are you doing? Nothing, dude. I haven't seen you do one thing. It's 2-2 because we've been able to get some good set-piece positions and score them. We are shipping goals. We shouldn't be shipping. We look like we've never played together before. And if I see us collapse on Donnelly when he has the ball in front of the back line one more time, I'm gonna I I'm I'm suing. I'm suing somebody. Whew, that was close. That was nervy. Leave Brittany alone. Nice, Rico. Well handled. Hendrick, yeah, uh, you wanna you wanna show up today? I mean, goodness gracious. Although sometimes the days he's having his worst day, he ends up scoring. So I'm, I I don't want to bring him out. Oh, Shikichi! Look at the hustle, George Shikichi. That's a legend's play. That is a legend's freaking play right there. Legacy play. From George Shikichi, the hammer, with a stunning individual effort at Old Trafford. He said, oh, that looks like a nice ball. I'd love to have that. The goods have been delivered by George Shikichi. The man who, we loved his analytics. He's an amazing pressing winger. Steals the ball, gets in front of his man, composed finish. 3-2 in one of the biggest matches of the season. And it's all George Chikichi. <sighs> I went right into our 4-3-3 as well. I'm not giving him a third opportunity to... This is an amazing match. Very frustrating match for us, but it is an amazing match. Constantelius, let's go. I need you. Yanis, I need you. I thought Vicario was going to grab this, I'm going to be honest, and then he just, he just didn't. I don't know what he's doing. Thank goodness he took away the low shot there. Regimich. Dude, Ignacio's on a 6.2 right now. That is awful. 
God. Defense with a an absolute stinker of a performance. Uh, let's go Mikey Moore. And then I'm going to go yeah, 72nd minute. I'm going to go Marcelo Enrique for Eves Basuma as well. So we're going to have a bit of a tired defense. I want, um, I want good energy in that middle midfield with Regevich and Marcelo Enrique. Very fresh legs to keep playing this way because we're looking for the win, Chet. We are looking for the win. I'm even going to move this up to attacking. We've shifted back into our offensive tactic. Oh, play it short, play it short, play it short. Yes, yes, yeah! Oh, such, that was a good play. Just wasn't a good shot. 89th minute, Old Trafford. Radjevich. <laughs> Let's go, baby. That's a pen, ref. Referee. Ref. Captain's pen. We thinking captain's pen here. Don't have any of my good takers on. Rico Lewis is the captain. I'm thinking captain's pen. This is a captain's penalty. This is at Old Trafford, like 90th minute penalty. Title implications, top four implications. I don't think he was offside because the fullback. That was my first thought, but uh, I believe we're going to get a penalty here. Simone Scotta flopping around like a fish. He magicarped his way to a penalty here. That's it. Let's go. <sighs> Our, I mean, the best penalty taker we got uh, right now is Rico Lewis on the field. Uh, he's a 12 in penalty taking, 16 in composure. He is the captain. He's built for this. This is his moment. Rico Lewis, the right back and leader of this team. <sighs> From the penalty spot, let's get the cinematic angle. Rico Lewis. He scores it! The captain's first goal of the season is the biggest of the season. Rico Lewis. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. All right, let's hang on to it. We've had the lead three times already and given it back all three times. That is a brilliant penalty by Rico. 4-3 in an epic game at Old Trafford. Oh, baby, I love it. Their manager, I actually forgot who it was, just went for it. Absolutely went for it. Um, uh, we got to look out for Baldassani. We got to... going to score here <sighs> what a match I'm lightheaded dude I am lightheaded what a win Walking around Old Trafford. Four, three. We are a point off the top of the league and five points ahead of Manchester United who had been making a charge. We had the lead three times, gave it away three times, and we found a way to win the game. Epic play by George Shikichi. Clutch pin from Rico Lewis. Neither team had 10 shots in the match. Every shot was going in. 
Goodness gracious. No, yeah, City lost before we played. We knew going into that match that we were going to gain three points if we won. And we were going to, you know, it was already a six-pointer because United was in third going into the match day. <sighs> Newcastle's now in the conversation, which makes sense. I mean, they're very, uh, very well-funded right now with the way things are going. Another road match. Hello, Bradford City. Look, Amar still gets to play an extra match right here. Ridiculous. Why does United not have their club logo? Because they sent cease and desist letters to the people that make the uh, logo packs. Ooh. 93rd minute goal from Arsenal puts them in fourth place. <sighs> Liverpool's still in... T Liverpool and Chelsea are in 10th and 11th. Yikes. It is a yikes for me, dog. Yeah, Arsenal's, I mean, they're the four-time champions. I suppose I should have assumed they were going to make a run, you know? Should have assumed there was going to be some sort of push from them. Hello, Bradford City. I'm very happy to see you on my schedule after starting with Milan and United and having to sweat both of those out. But look, that was a really uh, that was a really tough part of the schedule, and we just got uh, a, you know we just won both of them. When things look grim, be the grim reaper. We reaped. I guess I can do that with it. Yeah, I know it was very weird. They did it. Uh, you know, I think that they did that almost like two years ago now. Manchester United actually sued FM. If you if you needed a reason to dislike the United ownership group even more, they sued football manager for Man United or whatever, Man U being too close to their brand name that they were using in the game. They actually did. Uh, they actually did do that. That was a lawsuit I legitimately covered. Tim Prescott. I actually really like this kid, and I, the, well, you can tell that I do because he was already on my list for guys to target with transfers when we hit the uh, when we hit the window. This guy is uh, going to be on that list as well. Clemenko, no. Bradley Pereira, didn't you just move? Joao Martins, we love Joao Martins. He's got the quality, but uh, he is pricey right now. That doesn't mean we don't love him just because he's expensive. That doesn't mean we don't love him. He's still one. Manchester United are a washed club. Now they're actually, I mean, look, they're you'd rather be them than Chelsea right now. I mean, you know, league position wise and everything. But there's just something that even when like, obviously Manchester United's in Europa League spot right now, even when they're there, there's just this feeling that they almost like shouldn't be there. I, it's hard to describe, but, uh, but like they're, they're, you know, it's the goal difference, obviously. It's the fact their goal difference is so bad. You're like, okay, they're getting blown out in losses. They're squeaking all their wins. Like, they're really, you get the feeling they're really gutting it out. Like, they're not getting FM'd into the Europa League. You get the feeling they're really gutting, like, the best they could have been doing this year is where they are. Not a great feeling for them. Where's KO Day? Finally, freaking play KO Day. All right, we're going full rotation. Where's um, Vyshkovich? Fernasio, thank you. Doig is out for Ingley and McAvoy, who's going to get a nod. Uh, Rejevic, who, he's fine. Famous last words, I know. Uh, Kanda. King Kazu Kanda. Mikey Moore, Yanis Constantelius. Give me Eberts is the defensive midfielder. Yeah, you know what? Give me Matt Franco Mastantuano. That dude deserves a shout. He deserves a shout in the team. Who really cares that anybody deserves, but <laughs> he deserves a shout in the team. What was that? Is Doig, Enrique, Javi Guerra. Javi Guerra should be rested. Let's get uh, Isaac Babati now that he's working his way back up to fitness from his broken leg in the offseason. Let's get him up there. 
Okay. Next match is Prem, so George can play. Awesome. Awesome sauce. Yep, this team should be able to win at Bradford City in the quarterfinal of the League Cup. Please tell me, you know what, Kelleher. Now nah, that's stupid. It's the quarterfinal. We've already had enough issues with friggin' Vicario. Feels Javi Garris should have been picked. Mickey, you have broken ribs. You go worry about that, okay? You have broken ribs. Good King Kazu sighting, though. Yeah, this song seems to be in every single playlist that we use on stream. Is Kelleher good? Not as good as he is in real life, is the way I would word that. He is definitely worse in this game in the way he's developed than he is in real life. Oh, please. First minute. Give me that first minute goal. McAvoy. Oh, he dropped it. Oh, no. Mikey Moore. Who's there? Coyote. What a touch. Did you say this keeper is having kittens? What is that phrase, dude? <laughs> this, yo, this keeper's already having kittens, bro. He's losing his mind out there, bro. Give me that ball. Give me that ball. Nice, Santi. Oh, Regovic. Mikey Bohr. Oh, yeah, Regovic. KO day. Phillips. Vishkovic. Ref, that's an obvious foul. Whatever. Terrible pass. Who is that? Regovic? God, you have 18 passing, dude. The hell is that? You're like the Einstein of passing. Turns out the dude was just the actor that played Einstein in, uh, what was that movie called? The Big Bang Theory? No. No, I was, I was joking about Oppenheimer, dude. I was joking about Oppenheimer. The original Big Bang Theory. Oppenheimer. Santi Jimenez. Mikey Moore. Inglian McAvoy. Eberts. Eberts. All Mast and Tuano. Santi. Regovic. Yeah, who needs to go closer to the goal, dude? God, his 13 first touch absolutely kills him sometimes. Get that ball out in front of you and just go with the goal, man. Just go with the goal. Eberts took a knock. A slight, what was that? A slight uh, something? A slight something or other. Got to be specific now. Up to Eberts. Up to Eberts. Thank you. Eberts, classy. Kazukanda from Franco Mastantuano back to Mastantuano. You want to know why you don't play, dude? You want to know the actual reason you don't play? Because you're not good enough to play. After he, after they did the bomb test, he should have said Bazinga. That would really it really would have brought the movie together. Mikey Moore. Oh. So we're losing at Brentford in the League Cup quarterfinal. Nice pass. Kazu.
You can't play over there. Are you joking me, Kazu? Well, now you can, because I want I, I want double cut again now. Need to be able to put more pressure on them. Switch the wings. Dude, Franco. God, you suck. Franco, how do you play for the friggin' Argentine national team? He has like seven caps. I won't work the ball in the box now. We might want to make we, we might want to make some other cheeky adjustments though, like by bringing in a whole new team of players. That might be the cheeky little adjustment we make. I'm gonna give these guys like ten minutes. They don't have a lot of time. They don't have a lot of time to endear themselves to me. We are losing, and this is only a ninety minute match, and then it goes straight to pens. So we kind of need to make it happen. Can't putter around. Oh, that's a bad ball, McAvoy. Throw a bottle, throw the player. Hell yeah, dude. Start chucking players around. That's legal, right? Eberts. More. Oh, good running ball. Mastin Tuano. Oh, Mikey Moore. Conda! Oh, it was a lovely ball, too. Mikey Moore, you fox. So well worked. What? What is... What? How does that make any sense at all? I'm literally, uh, if you're watching the recording, I'm sitting here, I'm getting no notification from uh, OBS that anything is wrong. I guess we're back now. I That is the first time anything like that's ever happened. Because I got no notification that anything was wrong. No notification from OBS. Everything is working perfectly. Twitch just went down for a second. Scottish Cow, thank you for the two months. Dude, Kazu just scored. Kazu literally scored. And we we missed out on that moment for for what? I don't even know. Is it not pop? This is the goal. Apparently, some of you guys weren't able to see it. That's the goal. You'll be able to watch it on, like, the, uh, I don't I don't know what just happened, but I know the recording is still going, and so if you follow the Zealand Streams channel, you will be able to see my very confused look as I saw a bunch of Fs in the chat. We didn't lose internet. Nothing happened with OBS. OBS was working great. Oh, I thought that was it. OBS was uh, fully functional. I have zero dropped frames for this entire stream, according to OBS. Connectivity at 100% the entire time. Could not tell you.
There, uh, the only sign that anything was wrong is that there were a bunch of Fs in the chat, <laughs> which is not normally how that, uh, never how that worked. Stormtrooper, thank you for the 34 months, dude. I appreciate that. that is crazy. Thank you for supporting the stream. That's so bad, dude. A minus. That was a good dad joke, Stormtrooper aiming. That was a good dad joke, chat. Feel free to rate it yourself, but that was a high quality dad joke. I also believe some of the European matches have kicked off. We will re up you on my predictions. You can get your own predictions in as well, and we will be tracking those together. Um, but I think we've across the time i think some of those teams uh have kicked off now seems like a twitch issue okay cool i i i was like i have actually never had uh a, a an, an f that looked like that wait i got there were there wasn't a single part of of obs or the internet that was messed up it just dropped away dude But first, we need to not draw Bradford uh, in the League Cup. Radjevic, come on, man. All right, 20 minutes. I don't want the lottery of penalties, so I'm going to start to make more aggressive changes. Mast and Tuano, you're there. Uh, Genius Radjevic. I'm going to drop Regevic for Indrik. I'm going to bring Indrik in as a striker. We're going to play Indrik as the striker. Gamara and Constantelius behind him. And then Mikey Moore and King Kazu. And then we're going to do the old move him up operation. Don't tell me he can't play there. He can play there. Okay. Support. You'll be fine. Indrik and Constantelius get in. We're changing our tactic. We're putting crazy pressure on him for the last 20 minutes of this game. We are not letting Bradford have a moment of peace. Tell me we can win this game, dude. Tell me we can win this freaking game. Oh, let's go. Streamer doesn't know Bradford were in the League Cup final as a League 2 team. No, I did not know that. Just watched your vids on star ratings. Unbelievable. Yeah, that was pretty wild, wasn't it? Uh, it's pretty insane. How inaccurate the potential star ratings can be is pretty wild. I, I personally love it, but that just makes the game harder. It really just makes the game harder. Goal! Make sure everyone's good. Make sure there's no weird, off weird offside. Yes. Oh, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Actually, let me just switch to this. Hopefully, hopefully we have now survived. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I actually saw that tweet, but I do love that. If you take the name Celine Dion and say just the vowels, it's E-I-E-I-O. Come on, Ashley, give me that. Ashley Phillips, old school English ball. Our set pieces are cooking. Oh, we scoring again. Oh, way to battle, Kazu, way to battle. Oh, Kazu! Oh, oh what is that? Constantelius literally won it back immediately, so I can't be mad, but I can question. Oh, what a play. Oh, it's Kazu! Shoot, dude. Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense. I do too. I think it's more realistic that potential ability stars are really inaccurate. They're like a rough guide. Like there's a better chance their potential is high if it's, you know, if their range is all the way up, but it's still just a very rough guide. Like in Bayern's Academy, what was it? The guy was two to three star actually had the highest potential on the team. Conda, oh, and it's in. 
Oh, did Freiburg just go down? West Ham made it 1-0. Oh, that's tough. I picked Freiburg in that, too. I picked Freiburg in that match. But West Ham getting an early goal means the dynamic changes completely. So Freiburg's going to have to try and settle itself down now in the game. Mikey Moore. And Drake! Oh, that freaking tractor engine of a foot he's got. Anybody that has to play in the next match that's tired? I uh, know. So we're just going to let this ride. Okay. Should be good. Should be Gucci. So PA is locked. Yes. At the start of a save, every player has a set potential ability. They are by no means guaranteed to reach it. There's a lot of extra factors that go into that. But in terms of like a player like Indrik, his potential ability, that was offside. His potential ability is in a range from 160 to 190. So at the start of the save, the game will pick a number between 160 to 190 and assign that as his potential ability for that save. So he could have like fringe Messi. Oh, what a run. Oh. Fringe Messi potential. And on the low side, he could just be like Serge Gnabry, I guess. But. The stars then are completely different, though. Because as the, the video I came out with yesterday talking about the star. Oh, two goals for Ashley Phillips. All right. Hello, League Cup semifinal. Nice to meet you. How'd I get Hendrick? I don't know, dude. He was on sale. I He was on, he was on sale. Look, I was looking at the bargain bin. $85 million for Hendrick. That's a bargain. Please, no. Thank you. Watched your video about star potential and thought about what are the potentials related to the chance they have of reaching that PA on your team. I think that'd be really convoluted. I think that it's, I mean, look, I don't know for sure that it, I don't know what would be stopping Jonah Kusiasare, who's one of the main examples we talk about in that video. I don't know what will be stopping him from reaching that, but yes, he often does. Jonah Kusiasari usually becomes a really, really good player. All right, dude. I mean, they're trying to they're trying to spook me a little bit here with their set piece goal in the 97th minute. Can you imagine? I would be so furious if they managed to score a second goal in the last like five seconds here. It's a lovely finish. It's pretty bad keeping, honestly. Another, another quiet stinker from Vicario. Okay, that's my ball. Good. That should be match. But what an effort from old Bradford City. Oh, Mikey Moore. We might be about to score here. Oh. I mean, ref, any time now. Seriously. They scored after time. Thank you. Hey, look, we got the result. We're in the semifinal of the League Cup with Everton. That's all that matters. They won away against Ipswich. All that matters is we are in the semifinal. I didn't really care how we got there. Vuskovic is now suspended for the semi. I think we got two more semifinal matches coming today. And now we step into a portion of the league season as we get into this January transfer win out. Wow, Milan want to pay $131 million for Bellarmino. I'm sorry. As good as he is, I would require two hundred. dollars I would require 200 million. 131 is not enough for that player. They're willing to meet our valuation. We can talk, but I don't. Th I don't think an Italian club would be able to hit 200 million. Uh, but look, I'm willing to sell anybody in the entire game for 200 million. I don't think anybody's worth that in terms of like the value contributed. Uh, oh, Chelsea's out. Newcastle beats Sunderland. So it's Villa, Everton, Newcastle, and us in the League Cup semifinal. Red cards galore. Sunderland bounce. United beats Leicester. That is a tough match, though. I know, because I've drawn Leicester this season. All 
I just finished the World Cup stream. How many streams have I missed from then to today? You've missed the transfer window and then the first half of the season, obviously. Because we are in December of that season. Or, I, I, I don't think I'm in discussions for a $96 million deal for Angelo. Appreciate, uh, you know, I appreciate your speculation, though. I mean, whatever, whatever gets you going. Do, do, do. <laughs> Liverpool scam Barcelona for Coutinho. Don't know why you're bringing that up, but yes, they did. <laughs> They did absolutely scam. Uh, they they did scam Barcelona, and Barcelona went from being very financially healthy to being financially ruined in like seven years. Give me Everton, please. Please give me Everton. Oh yes, at home, Everton, please. Everton. Everton. <laughs> Well, it's not Newcastle, so could have been worse. We got the middle of the road option. We got Villa and we're at home. Technically, they are a middle of the eighth. So I just see a way against United and a way against Newcastle. And back-to-back -back matches just got realigned because of my uh, freaking League Cup draw. That sucks. That's a tough double road trip right there. That ain't easy. No, I know, I know it's two legs. I know it's two legs. I hate that it's two legs, but I know it's two legs. I, did I say anything that made it sound like I didn't know it was two legs? Because I mean, I, I, how, how many years did we manage uh, Taunton Town in the Premier League? We won the League Cup with Taunton Town. I think twice. I know their game. I know their game. They can't fool me. And then there's City and Chelsea right next to each other. We're going to have some spicy parts of the season later on. Usually you want home second leg. Oh, you were saying because I was drawn home. So that's first leg, not second leg, that that home on the draw pops up. That I did not know. So that's me home first leg and then at Villa Park for the second leg. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> Marseille to land Vizkovic. Well, you better bring more of the money than that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, everybody else gets to play before us. How cheeky. Boxing Day is at Wolves. Okay. Hey, City, lose. I dare you. I triple dog dare you to lose, dude. True threat. You won't? Jay Westbrook, dude. Thanks for gifting five subs, man. Did they lose? Oh, they drew. Oh, wait, we can go top. Oh, we can go top. They're bottling so hard. They just drew leads at home. United drew away to Blackburn, who doesn't even have a win this year. That's Blackburn's first point at home all season. It was United with the draw. Newcastle was able to win. Arsenal lost at Brighton. Everybody sucked except for Liverpool, but they're like in ninth. Everybody sucked. Westbrook, thank you for supporting the stream with kindness. Thank you for giving five people the ad-free experience, the bacon, the emotes, access to the subsection of the Discord, sales, Mike, desolate, desolate creator, Walt, and casual. Enjoy the bacon. Enjoy the emotes. I'll see you in the subsection of the Discord. Somebody was spotted in a nightclub. Was I not paying attention? Oh, 
don't think so. Finn, thank you for gifting Principal Agent a sub, dude. That's very kind of you. Thank you for supporting the stream with kindness. Spoiler alert, it was Rashford. I knew it. Bit lower, some junior player. Not gonna lie, I think you're making this up. I think the I, I think it's a fabrication. I think this was made up by Big Club to try and promote the club industry. Dell missing from training one. Maybe I do need glasses. I mean, it is a youth player. Shout out, dude. What a what a baller. He's working on his other type of game. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. He's working on his game. Bellarmino Seca, you're in. Maybe I do need glasses. My apologies, dude. Get that right there. Coyote, England, McAvoy, Phillips. We've got these three dweebs. Uh, I want Regevich up here somewhere. I would like to have Regevich available, please. Thank you. Hi, Brentford. How you doing? Let's ride. Broncos country. Let's ride. Mute Kai, thank you for the four months. Thank you for supporting the stream. My friends are worried because they think I'm drinking too much brake fluid, but I know I can stop at any time. I wonder if that works. Should totally try that. Um, please, please don't actually try that. I feel like that would be very, very bad for you. So don't do that. Okay. Not going to be held responsible for that, but that is a B-dad joke right there. If we win this match, we are top of the Premier League. In December. No pressure. I mean, I'm feeling so little pressure. Let's uh, let's look at the scores. Oh, Slavia Prague got a red card. Well, they were already losing. How is no every single match is 0-0 right now? Except for the one goal for West Ham. That's crazy. All right, Indrik. The drama's yet to fall. Lewis. Rico. Steelers country. Let's weld. <laughs> Can't wait. Do I think Russell Wilson's cooked? Uh, I think that he will be slightly better than the Steelers quarterbacks they have already had. <laughs> I, I don't think he's going to be like a massive improvement, but I think he will be better than like Kenny Pickett and uh, Mitch Trubiskets and Mason Rudolph. Hendrick. Okay, Rico. Bellarmino Seca. He is sublime. He is seductive quality. He made it look easy in the rain. He passes it in. The best midfielder in the world, Bellarmino Seca. Classy finish. Classy freaking finish, Bellarmino. Classy. Eves. All right. All right. Keep your secrets, man. Keep your secrets. Seductive quality. Yes, because it makes you fall in love with the game. You like that? 
He just makes it look easy. Have we discussed? Oh, dude, I forgot to talk about the Kate Abdo thing. Oh. Yeah, the most awkward 10 seconds of television that's ever existed. The Jamie Carragher, Kate Abdo joke. So here, so either, oh, score. Oh, score, so we can talk about this. He's offside, dang it. Slightly awkward. Slightly awkward? That was so awkward, I could barely watch it, dude. That was so awkward, I could barely watch it. Here, let me, I'll find it on uh, Reddit. You be the judge, okay? Assuming we're going to handle Brentford here. Contact center girl, thank you for the five gifted subs, hell yeah. Thank you for making five people's days. Thank you for supporting the stream with kindness. And if you caught one, be sure to say thank you and show some love to contact center girl for giving five people the ad free experience. That is beautiful. That is a gorgeous uh, team goal by top spur right there. Don't show it. It's too cringe. Hey, this match is out of hand. So I'm going to show it. This match is at it. All right, you ready? So just so you're caught up on the lore here. Kate Abdo just announced that she has a real serious boyfriend or a uh, a fiance. I honestly can't remember. I don't care. Scorpy, thank you for the uh, thank you for the fourteen months. It's the preferred shampoo brand of truck drivers, L'Oreal. See, that only works in England though, because in the U.S. the word Lori just isn't used at all. But I'll give you a B minus because that was well done. Jonas, thank you for the seventeen months as well. Thank you for supporting the stream, dude. So the the lore is that Thierry Henry has got a crush on Kate Abdo, basically. That's like the giant internet conspiracy. It seems very obvious. The Kate Abdo recently announced this, uh, announces that she has uh, either a really serious boyfriend or a fiancé named Malik, who is apparently Deontay Wilder's trainer. Now listen to what Jamie Carragher is about to say. So first they're talking about sharing wearing this Arsenal jersey they're passing around the set. That's what they're talking about at the start. If you can make it through this 15 seconds, good for you. Got to wear it next. Next. And for the last part, you've got to wear it. I, and I'm loyal. I'm loyal. To who? Jacket, my oh, jacket Manchester looks United. Nice, man. Thank you my very much. Looks nice. Not to Malik. What? <laughs> Why would you even say that? Sorry? What? He hasn't had a mention in the show yet. He I hasn't think. had a mention. <laughs> Dude, this feels like a skit from The Office. What, <coughs> what the hell? What kills me is that the director doesn't know what to do. So first, watch everybody's reaction to this. Not to Malik. He says it immediately. Micah Richards is like, I'm out. He dips out. So look, he just what? down to the left. Thierry Henry looks at Kate Abdu with like, apologetic puppy eyes like i'm so sorry he just said that not to malik <laughs> he looks right at kate abdo he's like i did i uh, disregard my boy disregard my boy i mean this is insane what? and then <laughs> jamie Carragher's is like i am gonna laugh my way out of this i am gonna laugh so hard that it's Thank just that. gonna end <laughs> and then she says this this is what this this part kills me so she says why would you say that to Thierry Henry, and he just goes, sorry? <laughs> he's like, he's like, they're trying to distance himself from this so desperately. <laughs> he has another mention in the show yet. Yeah. To be fair, Jamie Carragher is now as red as a stop sign. He is very aware. He's redder than the kid he's wearing. He's very aware that the joke he just said fell completely flat. And to, to I honestly believe, to his credit, there are very few things he could have said here that could have allowed the show to continue in any not super uncomfortable way. 
I, I, Jamie Carragher puts his foot in his mouth so aggressively, but then he offers a lifeline that Kate Abdo, because she is an amazing pro, picks up on and they get out of it quickly. So he just goes. He has not a mention in the show yet. Yeah, because they've been talking about him on the show a lot. Oh, he has not a mention in the show yet. And then she grabs that as the lifeline and runs out. But that is just unbelievable, pure office type cringe from Jamie Carragher. Now, I did see a report that apparent, oh, not a report, a, a conspiracy theory, right? That Jamie Carragher, when he said this, not to Malik. he meant with a question mark at the end. Not like making a statement like you're not loyal to Malik, but he, uh, perhaps he messed up the inflection and what he meant to say was, like, you're loyal to United, but not to Malik? You know, like, that kind of... I, that's just a conspiracy theory I saw. So I want to give him at least maybe a shadow of a doubt that that's what he was trying to say. It's still a weird thing to say. But if, he's, if that's what he's trying to say, it's not quite as aggressive. Now, Kate Abdo, if you missed it, did a tremendous job... When they so bringing the show back today, it was obviously it was going to be really awkward. Like at the start of the show today, they got more new matches, whatever. Or yesterday, yesterday, sorry. And yeah, the que the question makes it better, but not by a lot. Then why did he laugh? Oh, because what that dude? What do you do in that situation? I worked in live TV for years. I've been a live streamer for five years. When you talk for hours and hours and hours and hours, you're gonna say something stupid. You just are. Jamie Carragher's got a higher quota than normal, obviously. But everybody, everybody that works in live media, they'll do or say something stupid, right? And you know it almost immediately. You're very aware of it. You can tell Jamie Carragher was like, "Why?" Why did, why? <laughs> why? It was a very awkward laugh. Yes. But what you need to do is not let the viewer know that it's awkward. Even though if we're looking at that, it is awkward. Thierry Henry and Micah Richards just folded in on themselves like dying stars during that. But Jamie Carragher's like, I'm going to laugh my way through this. And then he gave Kate a lifeline and she got out of it. But the way Kate started the show the next day was, we're like a family. And she went through and was like, Thierry Henry's the older brother that you look up to and all this stuff, like continuing their flirting, like love triangle tangent. And then got to Jamie Carragher and, he, and she was like, and he, and Jamie, he's the middle brother. Sometimes he says some really annoying stuff, but he knows we all love him and we know he loves us too. Like she handled it and everybody was laughing and stuff when she was saying that. She handled it incredibly well. One of the best presenters going. Joey Barton rolling over in his grave right now. Can't, hey, hey. Okay. No, no, CBS isn't going to ask Carragher to take a day off. People that were saying he was going to get fired, no. Absolutely no shot he gets fired from that. Because what they play up, what CBS has done a good job of creating is that they're the banter. The banter on that whole group. Oh, nice goal, Hendrick. Way to stay on that 3-0. Game volume is on. What? What? Their entire shtick is banter. And he went too far. Yeah, but I don't think he went too far in a, in a, in a way that was damaging. I think, uh, and then she also mentioned, like, that he had apologized immediately after the show and everything, uh, like, in her opening, was like, but when he knows he goes too far, he apologizes and we all still love him. Like, it was a very sweet moment. I think if you if you make him take the day off, it just makes it ten times more awkward. I think you've got a good thing going with that show. They didn't want to ruin it. Everybody there is a pro. Everybody, you know, that was a sick goal. Endrick is barbecuing Brentford right now. He's cooking with the sauce, a little salt bay on top. A little, a little goal. Oh, Pauk is up 2 0 right now? Are you for realsies? Oh, 
Oh, the goals are flying. Oh, so AC Milan's up 6-2 on aggregate now. Pulisic with a goal from Leal. I love Pulisic so much. Oh, Marseille. Comebacks on Villarreal. Three more goals for Villarreal at home and the Yellow Submarine pull off something amazing. <gasps> Dude, I saw you say this, but I forgot what it meant. Palk Thessaloniki with two goals in seven minutes. Baba Abdul Rahman with the first goal. It's 2-2 two -two on aggregate. The Greeks are alive, baby. They're looking at around a 16 tussle. Every other match, nil-nil. So Rangers, Benfica still level on aggregate. Fenerbahce still going through comfortably. Fiorentina's up a goal. Pilsen and Servette, the first match was nil-nil too. That tie might as well not even be going on, dude. That tie might as well not even be happening. <laughs> Nobody has scored in nearly three halves in that tie. Yeah, well, West Ham, they scored real early. But yeah, it is 1-1. Uh, so it's dead even in that. But big comeback by Pauk Thessaloniki at home. They got to be going crazy there. The two goals. Oh, Simone Scott. You figure he's going to score one of these eventually. Oh, West Ham's 2-0. Oh, shoot, dude. I didn't see the second goal. Who scored it? Oh, I mean, it just happened. Jared Bowen, well, four minutes ago, <laughs> weaving his way past the opponent. <sighs> Whoever said 3-1 West Ham was right, dude. I picked Freiburg. I had a weird feeling. Shit, that, that was indigestion. It wasn't a good, it wasn't good intuition. <laughs> Jared Bowen, what do you think he has to do to get in the England national team? Apparently not that. Give me Calvin Phillips, baby. On the wing. Focus on the possession. I'm going to start subbing out first team guys like 55th minute. We're going to make four subs. Because this has been a resounding performance at home against a team in 17th. This is what you want. This result puts us top of the league as well, which is amazing. First time we'll be on top of the league all year. Manchester City won their first 10 matches. They proceeded to like not win in their next five and somehow let us back in, and I'm not arguing. Can hidden, uh, can hidden attributes change? Absolutely. Same as any other attribute, they can change. Some of them move faster than others. Things like professionalism increase with age. The older a player is, the higher their professionalism is. Uh, like That doesn't mean that a 19-year-old can't have more professionalism than a 30-year-old. That just means the 30-year-old started with pretty low professionalism. You know what I mean? Uh, you can be really professional as a youngster, but even if you're not super professional as a youngster, that will go up over time. So old players will always usually make good mentors. Phillips was dropped. Oh, finally. Henderson's in the squad. Well, him and, him and Southgate are having an illicit love affair. That's the only explanation. Anthony Gordon got called up. Oh, I haven't seen the English team sheet. I suppose that would have happened for Nations League. Is it just two Nations League matches or is it like the Nations League final? CONCACAF is having the Nations League final in March. It's going to be a lot of fun. Should be another USA-Mexico. Tune in. It's always lit. Seca, come on. What do I think about the German call-up? We were looking at it earlier. It's pretty crazy, I, but I, I love it. I don't think it's as crazy as people were trying to tell me it was, but it, I, I love the idea of you've got an amazing like, football talent nation in Germany and the results in the national team haven't been great, so get some other guys in. Screw it, man. It's not like you're lacking for talented players in the pool. Oh, get it! Oh, the hat trick. It's friendlies? Oh, they don't even have uh, like Nations League stuff? Okay, so here's the England squad. Pickford, Johnston, Ramsdale. Love the Ramsdale call-up. Joe Gomez, Lewis Dunk. Oh, yeah, did you hear that Ben White didn't want to be called up? You know how crazy that is, dude? How petty that is? Branthwaite. All right. Henderson, Gall I don't have an issue with Gallagher, Bellingham, Palmer, Rice. Yeah. Oh, they did call up Bowen. Okay. So you guys are like, what's this idiot talking about? Bowen is in the team now. I mean, for friendlies, we'll see what they do for competitive matches. Anthony Gordon, Rashi, Madison, Saka, Tony, Ollie Watkins. Hell yeah. 
Yeah, the Henderson one is just weird, dude. I, I, I don't. So who would you call up instead of Henderson for the for the English in the chat here? Who are you calling up instead of Henderson? Oh, Chikichi. Oh. Chris the Gunner, thank you for the 31 months. Oh, my new. You would have taken my new. Henderson's a leader. I don't know, dude. I, the whole Saudi saga with Henderson was just so weird. He made it so weird. But I, I actually, I lost a lot of respect for Henderson. Almost not even because he went to Saudi, but just because of how weird he was about it. Like, he, he just seemed to be of two minds. Oh, that's a so... Oh, that was sick. Subs. Subs. Uh, Janice Rejovic. Doeg. We could sub him out. Or we could not. Anybody with no match sharpness that we want to have match sharpness? I mean... Technically, that'd be Mikey Moore coming in to accumulate his match sharpness. Hell yeah. And then KO Day for Rico Lewis, who's definitely had a lot of matches. I just wanted to get uh, four subs and then hold in case of injury or red card for a little bit. I think Kobe Mino would have been a good call up. But I also feel like there is a fair concern about calling somebody up to like cap tie them. But then, because there is the one-time switch, if you call them up, but then don't call them up again for a while, then they go for that one-time switch. Coyote! How about Ward Prowse? I probably would have gotten Mino over him. But I also would have taken Ward Prowse over Henderson. I'm also not the manager of England. And everybody, you know, the, the big thing on Henderson is the glue guy type of type of thing but I you know he's been out of the mix for better part of a year who else can Mino play for I think it's Ghana I think it's Ghana that Mino's also and they they're obviously making some noise about making that happen why he was offside there's no he wasn't how is he not off they're counting it. It's 5-0. Goal by Simone Scotta. Another absolute garbage goal by our striker. At least he scores those. Curtis Jones. Has he really taken the next step, though? Like, is Curtis Jones really taken the next step? From the like I he 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 doesn't feel like it to me. I feel like Harvey Elliott's taken more of a step than he has. You'd say yes? All right. All right. They get Curtis Jones in. Fine by me. I Look, whether I'm saying that or not, I would have put Curtis Jones in over Henderson, right? But my number one choice probably would have been Minu. I think Minu is exploding right now, and I think if you can continue that explosion, I'm not saying he'll turn into Jude Bellingham, but development happens in spurts, and that man is had a real serious run with United and shown some real flashes. And if you want those flashes to become more consistent, then start getting him involved in the national team setup as well. I agree with the shout that Minu should have been the best one. James Ward-Prowse would have made sense. He always makes sense. I feel bad for him that he's not more involved. Running K, thank you for the running key. Thank you for the ten months. But I, I need to I need to watch some more. I need to watch some more Curtis Jones apparently. Hasn't jumped out to me when I've watched Liverpool play, but I like, you know, hard to be everywhere at once. So, like the people from England watch more Premier League than I do. Obviously, that's why I deferred to you on that one. So they got him. They got Harvey Elliott. They got that fullback from Northern Ireland who had that ridiculous game not too long ago. The kids are all right for Liverpool. I mean, they've got that, that old team that won the League Cup. Well, they also have the, uh, oh, the center back, Jarrell Kwanzaa. 3-0 Pauk. That is a hell of a comeback, bro. That's before halftime. Down 2-0 on aggregate. Who's a Thomas playing for Pauk? Brandon Thomas. The, the Spaniard, obviously. 
What a turnaround by Pauk. They are now in the lead, 3-2 on aggregate. Fiorentina leads by one. Fenerbahce leads by about half dozen. AC Milan's up 6-2. That one's over. Benfica and Rangers are still level. Villarreal's still three goals away from Marseille after their disaster in France. West Ham's up a goal. But yeah, a few too many nil-nils for my liking. But I am loving the Europa League and the Conference League. I, I love the Conference League. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. I love the Conference League. Hendricks, you just finished watching the 10-minute guide to FM. Do you feel like it helped? Hopefully it did. Oh, get inside. Oh, get in. It's literally 6-0. Simone Skoda only scores garbage goals, but that's like a valuable life skill to have, you know? It's like a very valuable life skill to have, I feel like. Well, I wanted to get Doeg off, so I guess I failed to accomplish that goal. Okay, my good man. What we can do is put him in there, and then move him there, and move him there, and now we're all good. Yes. Yes, we are. So, Coyote on the left, Rosales on the right, Phillips into the middle. Thank you. Just want to make sure Doeg doesn't uh, lose the rest of his legs. Your video always helps. Thanks. That's good to hear. Yes, it did. All right, Hendrix, that's awesome. Welcome to the stream then, dude. Benzie, thank you for the three months. We're talking about who England should have called up instead of Henderson, and we're tracking Europa and Conference League. The Conference League has its charm. It just gives teams an op Like, it gives teams that, you know, it gives them a platform. I love watching it. I watch a lot of the, you know, I obviously I'm streaming right now, but I, I, you know, I'll plug the extended highlights up later. I'll watch, you know, watch all those. I love the, you know, and you get teams like Pauk and Dinamo Zagreb playing European knockout matches against each other. I think it, it it's a, you know, rising tide provides more financial opportunities to those teams, gives a chance to a team like West Ham to pick up a major trophy, like Aroma, huge trophy with uh, Jose Mourinho. Oh yes, Constantelius. It's an embarrassment for Brentford. It's Giannis Constantelius. Jenny's Rejevic with the assist, the Bosnian. Giannis Constantelius. Easy. We're going for the record. Screw it. We're staying aggressive. So nobody has a hat trick. We've got Indrik, Skoda, both on braces. Oh, Rejevic. What are we doing? Basuma. Indrik. Mikey Moore. Dude. Dude. Does UVA get an at-large bid uh, if they lose tonight? I think we should. But I think if we lose tonight, uh, of course, Virginia basketball, March Madness. Oh, what a goal! by Giannis Constantelius. It's 8-0. Good God, Brentford. Oh, it's, it's a gross moment for Brentford. It's a brilliant goal from Giannis Constantelius, the Greek wonder boy. He's not really a wonder boy, but he has taken the league by storm after coming from Park Thessaloniki in the Greek league. Now one full season nearly with the club. Oh, Brian and Bomo trying to salvage something very Oscar for Brazil-esque. But he shanked it. Oh, surely not, dude. There's no way we're getting nine. This team is 17th. They're not even like the worst team in the league. Giannis. Basuma. Skoda. Basuma. Coyote wanted the shot. I mean, honestly, why not? Rejevic. Rosales, that was the highlight. Okay, Mikey Moore. Constantelius. Mikey Moore. He wants one! Scott, I'm pretty sure that was blocked by my striker. <sighs> I'm pretty... We have five and a half XG with no pens in this game. Coyote. Surely not. We are padding our goal difference like you wouldn't believe. 
That is an amazing effort from the team there. We have beaten Brentford 8-0, and we are now top of the Premier League with a plus 40 in 17 matches. Well, an 8-0 helps that out a lot. 8-0 helps. And we've got Wolves away, Leeds at home the rest of our December. Now, we probably got a game on the first as well. That's Nottingham Forest. Got uh, We've got to run with none of the big six, though. That's nice. Hey, Tavaj, thank you so much for the four months, man. Look at Pauk and Dinamo Zagreb. I know, dude. Halftime, and they've already flipped the result entirely. Pauk Thessaloniki, which is actually where we signed Yanis Constantelius from. So very, very, you know, we've got our connection to Palk Thessaloniki. Ah, oh, Kafisha's only, well, 363 million. I mean, God, why didn't you tell me earlier? Let me just, you know, use the GDP of like freaking Jamaica to buy him. That sounds great. And Soboslai. Yeah, don't worry. I, I know he's good. I have to play against him. But they're not in Europe, and maybe he'll want to leave if they stay not in Europe for another season. Which they're on pace for. One, two passes for Mikey Moore. Rejevich discouraged from shooting uh, at long range. I mean, he's 13. I don't want to discourage him discouraged from getting in the area whenever possible. Okay, yeah, that is a weird trait to have in a striker. But allow him to play uh, in the buildup. Why would Doig not want to renew his contract? He's getting paid $11 million a year to be my backup left back. It's an atrocious contract for us. But he is a good backup left back, which is necessary when Mickey Vandevin decides to go and break his ribs all the time. Freaking loser. I mean this. How dare he break his ribs? How did you get mad at me for praising your form, dude? GDP of Jamaica is like 15 billion. Sorry, I shot a little high. GDP of the Bahamas. GDP of Granada. Dang it. Oh, well, I guess it's the Bahamas. That tracks. Five hundred eighty-three millions. The GDP of Bonaire. That's close enough. That's the yeah. That's close enough to what we'd have to pay for uh, Kvisha Kvadovskaya. How close is Haroldson to signing? Oh, I love the questions you're asking. I love the questions you're asking. I don't know, but we could check. How close? Are we to getting a monster payday? Antoine Lecom. Yeah, 22 years old. I, I just don't think you're going to add enough to your game there, Sailor. Do, 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 do. But if Hockett Arner Haroldson makes 15 league appearances for his club, on loan, we get $92 million. And what we're rooting for is for that to happen as we go into the January window and we get a massive influx of, like, I think we'd get, like, $60, $65 million up front that would actually go into our budget. Faride Gudice. They do not use him well enough. I am offended by his lack of usage in the team.
Okay. Just got to get rid of Wesley real quick. Hakan Arner Haroldson. 15. That's it, right? It didn't hit, did it? Did it already hit? That's 15, though, dude. He's played 15. Give me my money! Give me my money. Does it hit at the end of the year? I've never been in this type of position before. I very rarely do those types of deals. But does it hit at the end of the year? No matter what? It's guaranteed. It's guaranteed. It's mandated. So then it'll go through on the first. Like the official transaction will occur on the first as we head into the transfer window. That would be divine. No, I don't think our I think our balance is where it was at 134 million, so. He has a future transfer tag arranged on him. <laughs> Sound the alarms. We're making money. Somehow we are making money on the Hakon Arner Haroldson transfer. That dude plays wing, right? You better. Yeah, okay. What do you do? Oh, I run. Oh, nice, dude. Where? I don't know. Just I just run. <laughs> yeah, well, let's see if we can raise the retention. Good thought. I haven't asked in a while. Every time we've checked, it hasn't been there, but I haven't looked in a little while. Good thought. Increase percentage of transfer revenue. We are rich. We're filthy, stinking rich. My transfer retention's at 85% because Daniel Levy's a little penny pension piece of... <sighs> Zealand, calm. Be calm. Zealand. In through the nose. <sighs> Breathe through the pain. Breathe through the Daniel Levy experience. We've had it increase twice, and we are still not at 100%, despite the fact I've managed to keep the club in a very good financial position. Miguel Lichuge, yes, 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 yes. I know the potential ability can't really be trusted, but I currently have four uh, under-21 foreign players that have been signed this season. Do we have any future transfers agreed that I'm going to bork here? Yeah, Fabian Paulstrom Andas. So that means any foreign under-21 that we sign would be the last one we can sign. The worst rule ever invented. Preventing my wonder kid hoarding. This, uh, this guy was found in our Wonder Kid scouting by Jim Lawler, you absolute beast. Yeah, I mean, look, there's only so many attacking midfielders that we can have on our team, but this guy is such a good deal. Like, we'll move into the target acquired list. We'll see what we're able to do. There's also people like Marco Palma sitting around who can, you know, he can play like every position on the field. He's kind of insane. Um, he should also be on the target acquired list where we will be breaking down our various options. Kareem Kanate. Yeah, he's a little expensive. Uh, that's my primary concern. But I love a scouting report where we actually identify a couple of guys that uh, that make sense. Luca Romero, yes. Florin Dragan. Man has all the pace. Kvarch Gellia, I know. He's quite possibly the most expensive player in the world right now. So I, I don't know about it. Well, let me come back to you. Elia Aquaviva, he sucks. Jao Pedefai 
Oh, okay. Joao de Pede, whatever. Feijão, sorry. That's the national name of Brazil right there. That is... <clears throat> yep, not quite. Jeremy Doku? Oh, it's actually in a reasonable deal. Don't scare me with this Haroldson thing. Don't scare me with Hawk and Arner Haroldson here. And I mean this. He moves this summer, so we aren't going to have that money in January. Whatever, dude. Don't even care. Doesn't even bother me. I, I could not care less. I got scammed. Child Detective, thank you for turning the vibe around with five gifted subs. Thank you for supporting the stream. The Tarnitator, Dever, Ron, Face, Sky, welcome to the Hammers. Enjoy the bacon. Enjoy the emotes. Be sure to say thank you to Child Detective. In Biggles Con, thank you for the four months as well. Thank you guys for supporting the stream. And, uh, I, you know, this one goes out to you. Kazu's going to the Asian Cup, you freaking lemon. Whatever. <clears throat> At least that's once every four. <laughs> Jenny's Rejovic, Karsten Eberts, Luka Vyshkovic. Like any of you idiots are going to play. All right, Cities against Bournemouth. Arsenal with a draw against West Ham. We have two matches in hand on them right now. Nice. Yeah, nice. Okay, Rosales and Inacio, you're both... I was joking about Vuskovic. He's very much playing in this game. Uh, Coyote is going to get Rico since he's finally not suspended. We are going to try and get Doig through both of these matches. Guerra is notorious for his inability to play multiple matches, so we're going to go Rejovic, Basuma. Indrik can definitely do it. Uh, Seca will start, but I'll look to sub him off early in the same with uh, Jared Chikichi. And we are going to give a shot to Santi Jimenez to start this match. Just uh, we'll give him a we'll give him a look. I really am. Ugh. All right, sick. Got that. Benetti, lamer. This started at tier 10 to Prem. Oh, don't worry. Once you get rolling, those first couple of divisions are easy. Football manager is not designed to have divisions that low, so you can sign players that just, like, wreck the whole division you're playing in. Once you get to, like, division five, then you run into a wall, and then obviously the championship is a wall as well. But free signings, loans once you turn pro, don't look back, brother. Keep powering forward. At Wolves, a little boxing day. A little boxing day, Ty. A little boxing day, yeah. Kinda should start. I thought about it for a second, but uh, you know, on the road against Wolves, I uh, we're we're in a race for a league title at this point. That's clear. So we uh, the every single point is so important, and getting our best players onto that field, number one priority. Right, if we can get control of this match and take Seca and Chikichi and Indrik off, great, but. Oh, well played, Vyshkovic. It's a bad bit of distribution, but very well defended. Rejovic, oh, cheeky. Santi Jimenez. Coyote, quite the run. Do I have a more Gagan pressing tactic? Dude, this is a manic Gagan pressing tactic that we're using. Absolutely maniacal amount of pressing coming out of this tactic. 
Oh, it'd be mine, my good sir. Rajevic. Love his movement. Love his movement. Ugh. Not a natural goal scorer, though. And he really never will be. Uh, maybe try Shigichi on the right. I mean, I just like having both of them cut in. They're both good goal scorers, Hendrik and Shigichi. They both have goals in their boots. And when you run a player as a winger, they just get less up. They get less looks. All right, Eves, what are you thinking? Drag back. Obvious. Regiment. Oh, that got by the defender. They're going to run in two strikers whenever you pick up some more strikers. I mean, yeah, I, I've got nothing against two strikers in this game. You just have to be a little more reserved with your wingers unless you're going with like a four triple two. You just get two aggressive wingers, two strikers, and hell for leather. It's like the best pressing tactic there is, a four triple two, because you just take away the whole back line. And if you have step up on your midfielders, you can just cut everything off. Oh, there's no way he's on. Yeah. Although pretty display of passing, gentlemen. Pretty. I will provide some encouragement from the touchline. Doig. Oh, nice pass, Basuma. Radjevic. Koda, Hendrick. Oh, you unbelievable. Man City's losing. Oh, say, can you see? They are, they're awful. They can't win a game. Well, we just got to stay focused on what we're doing, keep doing our thing. But the dog days of the season are absolutely destroying Manchester City right now. Rejevich. Rejevich. Oh, Santi. Oh, what a header by Santi Jimenez. Look at that boy soar. Look at that boy soar through the night sky. Santi Jimenez from Rejevich. Oh, yeah. That is a very difficult goal for old Santi goal. We're getting contributions from a guy we very much want to sell from this team. <laughs> Huge. Focus possession. It is only 1-0. Let's keep really good control over this match. Keep the pressure off Vyshevich and Ashley Phillips, even though Phillips has been great. It's been like team of the week multiple times this year. Love a second goal so that I feel like I can bring in Constantelius and a couple other guys. For us. I meant for us. Thank you. I had to specify. Oh, West Ham scored again? Or we're back playing? Somebody said 3-1 West Ham. They're now exactly right. Ooh! Ooh! Dinamo Zagreb have scored, and we are back level on aggregate. Ooh, the only Europa League match with a goal. Fiorentina's still up a goal. Fenerbahce's up by a million. Pilsen and Servette, there's still no goals in that entire like that entire tie, which is crazy. Villarreal's still three goals behind. AC Milan's so running away with it. And uh, Rangers and Benfica still tied at two on aggregate. West Ham now leads by two goals. Good save, good save.
Terrible defense by Thessaloniki. Well, I mean, the vibes must have been 100 in the stadium. Huge credit to Dinamo Zagreb for blowing a two-goal lead, going behind on aggregate, and then managing to uh, pull themselves back level. Oh, Indrik, he does this a lot. Intercepts the pass. Santi goal. Please, just a cheap set piece goal. Send me on my... Vuskovic wasn't even near that. What is he doing? Bright noon kickoff for another hour, I think. Like that, right? That round of matches. Shikichi. Shikichi. Uh, I, but the, my biggest nerve jangle. My nerves are jangling because of University of Virginia basketball tonight. We play a game that if we win. We're in March Madness, but if we lose, we really serious chance of not being. Oh wow! What a what? Goal! What a ridiculous goal! Oh, the keeper drops it. We pick it up. I'm getting our three uh, three second level players in. What an absurd goal that was! We're making the four subs. Uh, I'm gonna get Doig as uh, the last guy a little later. What's the keeper doing? Bellarmino second gets a second, and Tottenham looking comfortable at Wolves right now on Boxing Day. Would you ever like to see an American team incorporated into a European competition? Uh, no. No. I, I think that maybe the Western Hemisphere should team up. So, like, you know, playing the best Brazilian teams and the best Argentine teams would be great. I, I I believe that World Cup qualifying and Continental Club competition should combine between uh, North and South America. I think North America and South America can we you know we both have things to add. South America's issue in qualifying is that they have to play a ton of matches because they only have one round. They don't have a bunch of bad teams to make up the bottom. Concacaf's got that. Concacaf's issue is that it has, you know three teams with with any real chance uh costa rica being the third but costa rica is all grit and tactics and they do they're amazing at what they do but well, that's a lovely goal santi goal cooking again <clears throat> the problem with that's the travel time it's really not bad dude the travel time on any of those is not bad. The only issue would be Canadian clubs. A flight from Chicago to Columbia, it's like five hours. Maybe six. Yeah, there, there is no travel time that you'd be able to put together if North and South American combined that would compare with an Irish team having to play a Kazakh team in UEFA. So I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Like I know there's always the United States is huge when it, when it comes to like the clubs and side to side, but think about it, the vast majority of CONCACAF, literally two CONCACAF members are North of Mexico. Three actually, Bermuda. Bermuda, the US and Canada are the only three CONCACAF members North of Mexico. Everybody's right next to South America as it stands anyways. Let me get Doig. Time to get him off. Rico, you're in. Doig there. KO day shifts. They do not need England McAvoy on the bench. Uh -uh. Doig. You're getting off, bud. I hope it's still growing in the U.S. Dude, the U.S. has made the uh, the the round of 16 in two of the last three World Cups. Germany wishes they could say that. What a goal by Mikey Moore. Absolutely outstanding football from the Academy product, Mikey Moore. 
He's got all the goods, this Mikey Moore. He might not. What? We didn't get a highlight? I want to I wanna see that goal again. What do you mean? City is still losing. Vardy all just scored an own goal. I want to see that goal again. Come on. Give me. There we go. Pick this. Pick this out, Hein. Mikey Moore with the turn. Right foot. Tractor engine. Hein can't get down quick enough. Oh, brilliant. We just keep scoring late in games. It's like we're unaffected by complacency. We just run the score up on everybody. Ooh, did you say Villarreal scored again? Oh, don't tell me they're coming back. Don't tell me Villarreal's coming all the way back. They at least can believe now. They're two goals away. Let's just see if we're about to score here. Rico. Uh, guess not. McTominay really making that career last. Offside. Oh, VAR took it away. The yellow submarine trying to do something special. Down 4-0 from the first leg. Still only up 1-0, I guess. That's a pen. Okay. Who's on a hat trick? I guess Santee goal can go for it. Well, it's still 2-0. I mean, here they... The goal stands. Oh, it is 2-0. Okay, so the comeback is so on. West Ham's up 3-1 on aggregate. Uh, Fiorentina scored, so this is probably toast. It's 5-3 on aggregate now. Maccabi Haifa with a good showing, but Fiorentina able to defend the home turf. I'm amazed at how long Pilsen and Servette have gone without a goal. That's a hat trick! That's a hat trick for Santi Jimenez. Santi goal. That looks like a $100 million forward, if you ask me. Big transfer moves coming for Santi Jimenez. Zagreb's pressuring a lot. Ooh, 3-3 three, three on aggregate. Zagreb trying to come from behind, I guess. They were in the lead, then they blew it. Now they're trying to come from behind on the road. Weird dynamics. Jao Gomez. Oh, dang it. Ugh. It's a it's 48-year-old Atiba Hutchinson. Get that out of there. Why do I care? That just saved me on clean sheet bonuses. I really don't. He's not no, it was not Atiba Hutchinson. I just I just saw the name Hutchinson, and I dared to dream. That's what I did. I dared to dream. Sonoli. Zanoli can, oh my, oh, oh, what a save. Oh, come on, dude, what? It's the most padding the XG nonsense I've ever seen. One of the most, I mean, I'm so glad we're up five to one. One, saved, third one. Just get out of here, dude. Get, get out, what, with this nonsense. What a save, I mean, he literally is like, a, he Scott Sterling to this. He hit it right into him on the ground. Uh, post, Vicario's face, then the net. The Wolves' comeback is so on. They actually just got like one and a half XG from that play. Outstanding moves. Can really sell that to the shareholders, dude. And Scott Sterling! Ah! Just kept coming right back to it, man. We are, we're top of the league by four points, chat. This is, you know, I, uh, when we started this season, we didn't really think this was in play, but holy smokes, it might be. I, I didn't even, I wasn't bold enough to set our goal as we're going out to win the league, but City lost to Bournemouth and we have created separation. Blackburn just got its first win of the season. Signs of life from the roses. Liverpool with the win.
Chelsea lost to United, which allows United to, uh, United to stay in the convo. Newcastle drew Nottingham Forest. Yikes. Doig clause? Uh, what? what? Uh, Doig has a clause? Uh. Yeah. Oh, he's doing... Sometimes I just think I don't read ever. He's one appearance away from making 20 appearances and we will owe Bayern Munich 8 million. All of these deals suck. Every single deal sucks. We signed Doig from Bayern Munich. Well, I guess it was only $27 million. That's not a bad transfer. He's a pretty darn good player. Loaned him to Juventus last season, and now he's become a, a really regular presence because Mickey Vandeven's been injured. I mean, the clause doesn't matter, though, uh, because we got to play him. He's our starting left back right now. Mickey Vandeven's got broken ribs, so... He's playing. Did you say Eberts is a 50% sell-on fee to Bayern? Oh, my God. The profit, and then we only bought him for $11 million. I could buy that clause, which makes economic sense. I could buy it for $5 million. They're also owed another installment. They get 350000 per game for the next three games he plays, and they get $1.7 million after he makes 13 more league appearances. But I think we buy this out. Ebert's just appeared for Germany for the first time, and they want 50% of the profit. Oh, yeah, we're buying this. Literally a sale of $20 million for Karsten Ebert's would make them more money than this. Would make them about this amount of money. Okay, so we're buying that clause for $5 million. Uh, goodness. We can buy out an installment of 455 k for one ninety one. What is Auger doing? Sure. Bernard Boateng, 5% uh, of the next transfer fee is going to the Sharks. Yeah, I'm good. 20% profit from sale? No. 30% profit of next sale? For Javi Guerra, they agree to buy out for $900,000. We'll go ahead and take that. That's a good deal. 30% of profit on Rico Lewis. Good God, man. $1 million paid out to Manchester City to get rid of that stupid clause. Because we can sell Rico for like $80 million, in which case they would make an actually really significant amount of money. Hendrick, we've got clauses paying out, but of course we do. Why not? Okay, at least we took care of a couple of that. We spent like seven and a half million dollars to uh, buy out some dumb clauses on Guerra, Audrin, Lewis, and Eberts. One nil Benfica. Oh, big moment. Oh, and we're no, we're not tied. That's sorry. Royal Union Saint Gawa have scored in Turkey. They are now two goals away from a ridiculous comeback against Fenerbahce. So that is alive. Benfica's in a VAR review. Villarreal's two goals away. West Ham is safe by two goals in the London Stadium. Freiburg bottling. Milan's very safe. We will see if that Benfica goal gets confirmed. The fourth time that he has increased the transfer revenue retention percentage. It is finally at 100% chat. We have won the war with Daniel Levy. We have top le we have top level junior coaching and we have the highest amount of transfer revenue retention. Chat, we have done it. We have outflanked Daniel Levy on the battlefield of life. 
It is 100% on transfer revenue retention. He believes in the project. I believe in this team winning trophies this year. You know what I'm saying? Oh, FA Cup third round's coming up. Hi, Sunderland. How you doing? Hi, Sunderland. And the Norwegian center back is going to get here. Yes, Andush. Did he put an upper limit to it? I mean, I guess we can check, but that will help because we are looking to make a couple of sales. Uh, first off, Pape Matarsar, he is still on the list. Santi Jimenez, even though he's playing, is also on the list. We hate those two contracts, and we want to get those guys off our team. It's really plain and simple. We hate those guys. Googly Elmo, Eves Basuma, Kelleher contracts expiring. I'm fine with that. How is uh, how's the fitness for Eves holding up? Awesome. Yeah, this is the this is the time. This is your final season, Eves. We have Marcelo Enrique who steps into that spot next season. All right. <sighs> The 29th match time. We rested a few guys, and those guys will now be able to step up and play the next two matches, our league matches that we really need guys for. Rico Lewis, how you doing? Doig, I'm actually, we've got like a full first team. I'm just going to go ahead and start Ingley and McAvoy. And we're just, uh, just going to take Doig out, not because of like, the clause he will play in the next match. I just we have we have the rest of our first team here, so I'm thinking that we uh, we just need to make that move. All right, Kazuma Kanda is on the bench today. He he gets a bench spot. They also need to look to sell Franco Mastantuano. That is somebody we should move. Franco has really not found himself involved at all. I prefer Gamera to him, and that has not changed in Franco's limited playing time. Okay, at home against Leeds, who have been really decent this year. They're a mid-table team competing for a European spot. <laughs> at home, take care of business. How many players do you plan on selling, buying, loaning, or loaning out? Uh, I think we sell Santi Jimenez, sell Papi Matarsar, buy a new backup striker, and buy a wonder kid, and we're good. I think we have the money for that. I think that those two sales will free up a lot of wage budget as well. We'll stop paying two of the really stupid contracts we have on this team. Calandra, thank you for the 37 months. Oh, my goodness. How can I get my youth training uh, rating up? I have absolutely no idea. Tried to improve my youth facilities recruitment. Tried better coaches. The rating is still just not going up. That's what you need to do. It takes a while. So if you read those messages where it says, like, we will start investing and our over time, our youth, uh, you know, recruitment will reach X level. It does not happen immediately. As long as you're improving your facilities, your junior coaching, your youth recruitment, that's what you uh, can be doing. There's also like the, sometimes there's an increased youth level option that you can ask for that will like blanket improve multiple things. Hendrick. Oh, what a pass! Bellarmino Seca skips it wide. This is our, I think, our last match in our first round of the season. Like, we will have played everybody once after this match. Rico. Rico. Rico charges. Hendrick. Javi Guerra. Oh, who's there? England McAvoy. It's Rosales. Ah, not the guy I wanted in that spot. Not his fault he didn't finish it. Is there a way to make your players not for sale? Uh, no. You can try and set the asking price really high, but ever since that, what a save. Ever since they introduced that whole dynamic where players can get mad about their asking price, then if, they, if they're okay with you setting their asking price really high, it's fine. But 
If not, then there's no way you can say like a player is not for sale. Shagichi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, DK, my striker on our quarterfinal World Cup team with the United States. Fond memories between Daryl and I. City's winning. So why do the AI make their players not for sale? I mean, they are for sale. They're just, the asking price is stupid high. Nice, Bellarmino. Shekichi. Shekichi. It's Javi Guerra. Oh, and Drake. Oh, dude. Now, I think there is. Hold on. Somebody just mentioned that. If you go to transfer status and you can set it to reject all offers oh you can't set it to yeah you can set it to reject all transfer offers uh it's kind of behind my head here so that's like an instruction you can give your director of football that will automatically turn down any transfer offer so if you just are trying to get rid of all of the messages then yeah shaichi jikichi keeping the ball see you later 20 agility nobody can stay in front of this dude oh Going on to attacking. Let's get a few more numbers up the field because we are suffocating them. We have like 2XG, no pens. Sometimes a guy will get mad if you reject all. I mean, obviously, yeah. Like, you know, if Real Madrid comes in and you instantly reject it, well, then that can really anger a guy. So would I recommend doing that? No. But if you know that the offers you're getting aren't unsettling the guy and you're just annoyed by all the offers, that will work to get rid of those. Oh, McAvoy. Oh, it's Ingley and McAvoy. The youngster. The English national team left back who has one appearance for some reason. Pauk scored. Oh, baby. Is it that guy? Somebody in the chat said they were going to bring in a guy and he was going to run them ragged. Was it Kularakis? Such a cool name, you know. This one. <laughs> They're up one. 4-1 on aggregate. Well, 4-3 on aggregate. 4-1 on the day. Thessaloniki with the turnaround. Royal Union, Sangawa needs two more goals. They're probably not going to get them. Haifa needs two goals. Pilsen and Servette still haven't scored in either leg. Ultimate tie. West Ham's up 3-1 on aggregate. Marseille's up 4-2. Villarreal's got to send it now. And Benfica. Leeds Rangers 3-2 on aggregate in Scotland. Hey, Brandon. Glad it's been a good one, dude. Glad you could hop in. So the dramas to be found between Pauk Thessaloniki and Dinamo Zagreb. George Shigichi turns down the cross, tees up Eves Basuma. Ah. Rico. Oh, teasing ball for Santi. Oh, let's go. What a ball to George. Santi goal is always there. What a run for Santi Jimenez. Oh, Kudus scored a wonder goal. And West Ham is off and flying into the round of 16 of the Europa League with a 4-0. Hello. Takes the deflection. Santi goal, the master of the garbage goal, is there to poach home another one. The master of the garbage goal. Thank goodness. We have over 3XG in this match. Oh, please. Give me a second goal, and I'm subbing out second at halftime. 
Guerra. Shigichi. Oh, Bellarmino. Shigichi. Oh, the block. Jay Leeds name checks out. I'm sorry. But we are on an absolute tear this season. And if we, you know, in our first full season with Tottenham, when we took over, they were in 11th in December last year. If we could find a way to win the league this season, it would be one of my favorite accomplishments in FM ever. And we're somehow on, on the move in that department. I will see if we get to like 50 and I might make two subs to get like Shikichi and Seka off so they can start again in the next match. I love Mohamed Kudus. I think he is fantastic. So I'm happy that he scored a banger to back up that opinion. Nice pass. Terrible idea. Bissouma. Well, there's a whole crowd in there. Just can't get the ball to him. The gang's all here. We just need a delivery. There it is. Ah. What's the plan for the January window? We got two guys we want to unload. And if we successfully unload both of them, we will need to sign a new backup striker. Uh, we take care of all of that. I'm very happy. So I'm thinking two ins, two outs would be great. Chagichi. No, I'm going to make the sub. Screw it. Uh, look, eyes on the bench, okay? Eyes on the bench. Ineko and Giannis. We're also going to get Eves Basuma. He's apparently not playing well. Just figure we'll make that change for Marcelo Enrique. I know it's it's very early, but I, I trust the guys we're bringing in. World-class striker in January. I'd love that. Simone Scott is good, but he isn't great. I'd love to go get a world-class striker. Oh, it's Inacio. What a classy goal by Gonzalo Inacio. Oh, it's it's pure class. From the Rolls Royce of center backs, Gonzalo Inacio. He can do it all. He's not a defender. He's a footballer. Gets a little pocket of space. Takes it first time. Like he's hitting a crossfield ball right into the top of right to the top of the net. Complete dominance from Tottenham at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Oh, Ineco. Ineko Romo, it's Andre. Oh, what's a go by Hendrick? Go on, Rick. 85 million bargain from Real Madrid. He is special. There is no saving that from Hendrick. Sub. I am going to get Cancelo Inacio, actually. Weird, perhaps a weird sub, and I'm going to get Rico Lewis. I am going to burn out Javi Guerra and Indrik in this match, and they'll be on the bench in the next match. But I'll keep our defense intact. Final two subs of the match also. So 30 minutes, let's not get hurt. Uh, no red cards. And Rick, oh, the Javi. The son of game. I freaking love that meme, dude. I haven't even seen the second dude yet. I, I, I The memes are already fantastic. The yeah, Spurs are freaking marching right now, dude. We are marching. 19 played, 15-1 if we hold on to this. Oh, All right, we're gonna we're gonna hit the low tempo now. We're gonna hit the low tempo now. I think we uh we we're 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 thinking about chilling out. You guys wanna you guys wanna chill? You guys trying to chillax? Yeah, you're trying to chillax. Sick. Love chillaxing. No, 
I've heard is great. I'm not, I'm not like avoiding the movie. I'm not a hater. I like the first one. I'll watch it. I'm, I'm, I'm just not quick with my reactions to movies. Yeah, you know, I, I, I watch them on planes a lot of the time. <laughs> I haven't been to a movie theater in probably a decade. Like, I, I don't know. I'm not, uh, yeah, not quick on it. Zagreb, oh, in the 81st! It's Dinamo Zagreb! They've equalized, but it's been called back on VAR. Yanis Constantelius just came in, by the way. He is in the he came off, actually. He was subbed out by Pauk, and that's why they almost conceded. VAR has intervened and disallowed the equalizing goal for Dinamo Zagreb. It stays 4-1 Pauk, 4-3 on aggregate. Amazing. Oh, Enrique's hurt? Come on, man. Marcelo, what are you doing? It was a handball. What are you, you guys, you guys that were watching it, was it a handball? Dubs, boss man. Big dubs, boss man. The dubs floweth, boss man. City finally stopped losing. Liverpool won. They're actually up in sixth. They've been making a run. Chelsea's down in 11th. Arsenal lost to Newcastle in a big six-pointer that really separates the top four right now. Like a six-point gap. Even with the matches in hand, if they're one, it's a six-point gap. All right. Well, Enrique, you tight calf. I guess you're just not going to be a part of our next match against Nottingham Forest. I'm sorry to say. Matty Flywalker, thank you for the four months, dude. West Ham scored again. Okay, so they're falling apart. Uh, you said Villarreal's really doing it. Dude, they need two more goals. They're not. <laughs> It would be it would be wild if they did. West Ham was down one nil. They I said Freiburg was going to win. I was not standing on business. Uh, Servette and Victoria Pilsen are about to double up on nil nils, which is the best thing that's happening today. Uh, Benfica's up three two on Rangers in what was, in my opinion, the best tie coming into today. Palk and uh, Palk and Dinamo Zagreb said, "Hold my beer on that one," but still a very fun tie. Oh, how's he doing? That guy actually has great potential. Uh, allegedly. Allegedly great potential. We'll see. We will see about that. Oh, it's 3-0. They just scored. Is the app behind? What's happening? How is the app behind? The subbed in guy for Constantelius missed an open goal. There it is. There it is. Okay, this has got a chance to be magical, Chad. I'm going to leave this open on my other screen to see if something uh, comes up in the commentary. Villarreal down 4 0, playing their home leg. They have scored a third goal. It will be a manic all out press to get that last goal. Same with Dinamo Zagreb. They're down one goal at the moment. Royal Union, Singa, Wah, and Fiorentina, or in Haifa, are down two goals. Freiburg's down four. Pra, you know, Slavia Prague got an early red. That was over. Rangers need a goal or they're out as well. Hendrik now speaks fluent English. Hell yeah. Adaptability 100. Hell yeah. But there's drama brewing in the early window of the Europa League. Ooh. Sime Ianovic. Don't think I can sign him this window, though. We want to sign that other guy. We can't sign him. But I will say somebody with that kind of potential that's flashing it very high. Right, they're very insistent. His potential is fantastic. Then the price is reasonable. Some would even say it's right. Hey, you just got called up to the German national team, Jan Nicholas Besta. Uh, 
Oh, I love the new year in the prim. So fun, so many matches. The games tonight are going to feel so boring compared to these matches. Dude, for real. <laughs> it's rare that you're able to get this kind of... Oh, Haifa scored! No, I mean, surely not. They were down two goals on aggregate with four minutes left. Maccabi Haifa has scored, so it is 5-4 on aggregate to Fiorentina in Florence. Haifa is one goal away. That was a lot of you guys' fancy upset picks. So Maccabi Haifa's thrown some spice in. Ooh, Tala's Magno on the move. I see you. Oh, the transfer window isn't even here yet, dude. I'm down to sell Babadi. Uh, yeah, Isaac Babadi is drawing, drawing interest. I mean, could we get 60 million for him? I'm going to take him off the loan list. We're interested in a transfer. Everybody else is interested in a loan. So we're probably not going to be able to get 60 million for him, but ah, oh, fee pro team of the year. Javi Guerra made, I would assume the bench. Yeah. He's not in the starting 11, but we did get hot. Hey, Javi Guerra was in the fee pro team of the year on the bench. It was Donnarumma, Hakimi, Zabarni, Pavlovich. Really? I like Strahinja Pavlovich, but that's crazy. Mendez, Jean Neves, Manuel Ugarte, uh, Bellingham, Mbappe, Odegaard, and Erling Holland. Still. <laughs> North America Best 11, Franco Rosales and Santi Jimenez both made it. European Golden Boy is Sebastian Kirschbaum. Don't worry, he's on my short list. Andrew Manning, Young Player of the Month. Young African Young Player of the Year, Mahmoud Yahia. Fair enough. Amadou Onana, Belgian Best Player Abroad. All right. Team of the Week, England, McAvoy, Anasio, Guerra, Indrik, Jimenez. Penalty for Pauk. Oh, that could end it. That could end it right there. We got a couple of things right on the line. Villarreal needs one goal. Rangers needs one goal. Maccabi Haifa needs one goal. Either Pilsen or Servet need one goal. Zagreb needs a goal, but Pauk looks like they're going to get a penalty to complete a multi-goal comeback in their home leg. Oh, Slavia Prague! Yeah, man. Down 7-2 on aggregate. You start that comeback. Vicario just got sick, and Santiago Jimenez just got the freaking flu. Dude, I'm trying to sell you. Stop getting sick, all right? You're both missing Nottingham Forest. I'm going to have to go with Kelleher for a league match. No fun. Santi Jimenez is going to, I mean, he misses 11 days. That's like basically eight matches in January, like December, January. So he scored. Uh, all right. Andrea Zivkovic. And that's it. Palk Thessaloniki, despite a spirited start to the second half from Dinamo Zagreb, has completed a two-goal comeback with a resounding 5-1 home win. And now the eyes are on Haifa. Needs a goal. Villarreal needs one goal. Rangers needs one goal. Three matches within a goal right now. And then, of course, the double nil-nil, my favorite match of the entire time, Pilsen and Servette. Nil-nil in the first leg, nil-nil in the second leg. Bring on extra time. It deserves pens. Two teams that, I mean, they'd give anything to be in a European knockout. I'd imagine, or like in the round of 16. We get work permit update. Uh, we do not currently have any players on the ESC permits for the maximum of zero allowed. Okay. Sounds good to me, dude. Change season expectations. They would be willing to give me like 13 more, but I'm going to say no. I'm going to stick because they're not really changing the transfer budget at all. We're going to stick. The Zealandism is going to be crazy tomorrow. Dude, you know. You know it. This guy knows. Gonzalo Inacio, no. Rico Lewis. Oh, man, United's lurking. Real Madrid's lurking on Javi Guerra. Yves Basuma's got three Saudi teams lurking. Endrick's got buy. What's his value? Too low. I need a lot of money to sell Endrick, especially in a title chase. 
now that it's clear we've got a chance to do something that, you know, will be remembered for forever. Uh, Gamera, yes. Do, 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 Okay, uh, Gera, uh, Indrik actually bounced back. Gera's not okay, though. So we are on match day. I'm going to get King Kazu in there. Give him a shout at it. Regevich, where are you? You're going to pick up Gera, and we'll just play like that. We're going to give uh, King Kazu. King Kazu. Uh, yes, of course. Of course. Bellarmino second has not bounced back well between matches. Kind of angers me. All right, Santi Jimenez. Pape Matasar. What's the interest? <sighs> Be very interested in speaking to other clubs. That's new. I doubt it. Oh, yeah, I have the unavailable on. That's why I can't see Santi. So you've got Newcastle for loan and Juventus looking to generate funds. I'm going to hire an intermediary looking to secure the sale of a player. I'm going to offer him out. I am also going to hire an intermediary for Pape Matasar, as I don't believe. 20 to 30 million. Continental agent. Guy Paquet. Yes. 24 to 30 million for Pape Matosar. Yes, go. Give me that offer by tomorrow, dude. Marseille scored. Ah, uh, the dream is dead. Oh, best in the business. I won manager of the month 10 times. I don't know what to tell you. So Pilsen and Servette are going to extra time. Palk is good. Marseille scored and they hang on. Benfica hangs on to win after it was 2-2 in Portugal, they win 1-0 in Scotland to advance to the Europa League round of 16. Benfica survives. Marseille survives a scare in Spain to get to the round of 16. Milan is going through, so Europa League is settled. It's West Ham, Marseille, Benfica, and Milan. In the Conference League, Haifa is done. It just ended. Fiorentina wins 5-4 on aggregate to survive a scare from the Israeli League team, and they are going to the round of 16. Royal Union, Sengawa needs two more goals. They're not going to get it. And Zagreb needs two more goals. They're very unlikely to get it. Fenerbahce, 3-1 over Royal Union, Sengawa, Belgium. They are out. Fenerbahce through. Fiorentina through. European glory still on tap. Pauk Thessaloniki carrying the Greek flag into the round of 16, very likely. And that will leave us with one match still going. Pilsen and Servette. The best match that there freaking is, dude. The best match there is. Oh my goodness, they're going for Mujahid Kaya immediately. I like Mujahid Kaya. I don't know about 89 million, but clearly PSG is like, yes, so... Uh, but they're not they're uh, they're not pulling any punches. Oh, we just got a huge offer. We I uh, ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, it's locked. And he's not unsettled. There's no reason for us to take this. If it wasn't locked and we could start negotiating like 150, 160 million, we could have a conversation. But no. No, not just for 94 million. We're not gonna find somebody better to take Indrick's spot in the team. We got a nice long, reasonable contract on him. Tafka! <laughs> Thank you for the 38 months. No, I'm not taking it. Yes. I believe that we are going to be doing some... I don't know exactly what the plan is, but I do believe we're going to be doing some watch-alongs. Watch I'm, uh, I'm preparing for it. Oh, goal of the month. I already know it. I already know what it was. We won coach of the month. Tenth time. Daniel Levy, pleased. That's hard to do, chat. Pixel, thank you for the prime, but uh, you can't expect some watch-alongs. I mean, why? Why is that the goal? 
Said Levy's going to sack me for not taking it. I mean, it's like 115 million guaranteed with 94 up front. That's a decent goal. But Indrick's goal of the month was uh, that was the real deal. Indrick's goal of the month was the real deal. This is a oh, this is a gorgeous goal. Oh, stroke that thing, Cuzzo. Easy. Uh, but yeah, let's go look at the Indrick offer again. It's 20 million. Yeah, it's 114 million guaranteed. 30 million after 20 league appearances. 20% percent uh, profit a sale. I uh, yeah, I'm just not interested in that. I uh, I would want more money up front. I'd want more guaranteed money. Uh, we bought him for 85. I mean, in 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 a title chase, it's going to take a stupid amount of money to pull Hendrick out. I would say 150 guaranteed is probably my minimum. He's not going to be unsettled by that either. But body might be unsettled. There he is. Uh, I'm going to discuss the issue with him. The finances weren't right, so that he'll leave me alone. 70 million. Good God, yeah, dude. If I can get 70 million for you, I would sell you yesterday. All right, Arch, thank you for the five months. I appreciate you. Leave you get mad even I'm picking up a random penny. Uh, what jersey am I wearing? Orlando City, OCSC. We wanted to sell him in the summer, but then he broke his leg early in the preseason, so we've had to wait till January. We'll see if we can find a move. Board is still an A. We're still not an A+. Plus. Whatever, dude. Whatever. Leadership support's gone from abysmal to very good. Great cohesion, great atmosphere. Team's playing for each other. Playing well. Everybody knows where everybody else is going to be. We've already set the team for the match today. Apparently, they're trying to strike a deal at the end of the season with Eves Basuma, which I'm fine with. We're, we're going to let him go at the end of the year. Smeg, thank you for gifting us up, dude. Thanks for supporting the stream with kindness at TQ. Enjoy the bacon. Enjoy the emotes. Quarterfinal round. So this is the playoff round. The playoff round is uh, like the, the teams that drop down. So it's not the round of 16, but it's also not the round of 32. Because if you finish second in your group and then the team that dropped down from above. So Milan completed their 7-3 aggregate win over Slavia Prague. Is Fenerbahce through? Uh, yes, they won 3-1. Pilsen and Servette are still going. No goals in either leg. Best match ever played. An all-time tie being delivered. JDS, thank you for the year. Thank you for supporting the stream, brother. Congrats on your golden bacon. Do -do 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 -do. Do -do -do. A do 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 Okay, we just got to keep the good times rolling. Uh, this is at Nottingham Forest. Could be a tricky team going with a pack it in, you know, situation. Let's just get after them early. Might move my fullbacks up. Get really, get into that really aggressive formation that we can run. The Rocks and I have faith in you. We're not going to bust that out in the next match. So Nottingham Forest is fighting that brave fight against the darkness. They're in 16th right now. We're top of the league by four points, not an absolute heater. Long may it roll. This is the round of 16, you're saying? The play-in round already happened? Just delusional then. Why do they call it the playoff round? Okay, it's the round of 16. The play-in round already happened. This is the last 16 to get to the quarterfinal. Uh, in both the Conference League and the Europa League. The winners going to the quarterfinal. So Milan, Benfica, West Ham, Villarreal to the quarterfinal. Easy does it. It's the last year of this format anyways. My brain's already living in the, uh, in the future. 
So I got my eye on Alves. No, they want like 200 million now. Uh, yeah, I would love to have him on my team, but no. Next year, no teams drop down, which means if you're in the Europa League, you're just in the Europa League. If you're in the Champions League, you're just in the Champions League. No teams drop down next year because they're changing the format of all European competitions. Come on, come on. Easy does it now. Yeah, I like that. I like that change. Yeah. And then they like more teams make the Champions League knockout because they basically create a new play in round. Like the first round of the knockouts are teams that finish 9 through 24 in the, like, league table they create. Okay, boys. That's not good. That is a terrible giveaway combined with rampant stupidity. And we will not tolerate any of this any longer. Yes, you still drop in the preliminary rounds. You don't drop uh, once you reach the group stage. But you still drop in the preliminary rounds. So, like, as long as you're not in it proper, like, teams that make the Champions League will then drop down to the next round of qualifying for the Europa League, whatever. So on and so forth. It's terrible. It's Super League 2.0. No, okay, it's nowhere near what the original Super League was. The... Super League has adapted its proposal for what it wants to be towards what the Champions League was going to be anyways. I don't mind the Champions League change. I know they did it for money, but it removes the luck of the draw. I think it's fairer. And more teams get into the group stage than the knockout stage, which I think is fun. I think that's fun. Chagichi, come on, just get to scrap one in. Got to scrap one in. George Chagichi. Oh, King Kazu. Somebody explain to me how the new system makes money in the old, more money in the old system. Every team plays two more matches. So not only are there more team, there's four more teams in the group stage. Every single team plays two more matches. So you're just selling the right, like, you're just broadcasting more matches. And, uh, you know, that's why everybody always wants to add more games. The more games you play, the more ads you sell. Right? The more eyeballs you get. Thank you, George. You make a mistake, recover and go win the ball immediately. That's a good way to handle it. It's already too many matches. I agree. The reason it's too many matches is because all the stupid preseason tournaments they play. The money hunting preseason matches that they're playing. I mean, obviously, you got to go through the process of getting yourself warmed up for the season, but the, uh, you know, the pictures of Barcelona finishing the season and then having to get on a plane that night to fly to Japan to play a friendly tour. The Messi's like globe trotting preseason, you know? It's insane how many matches they play that like aren't even in the competitions. All right, I'm going to try and inspire confidence, even though I am not inspired by the lack of confidence in our team.
I think, I think saying footballers are modern day gladiators is a bit too far. I am an advocate for cutting down the number of matches played. I don't hate the new Champions League format. I, I think that, you know, I, I think League Cups are outdated. I think England should get rid of the League Cup. Uh, and, you know, like, like other countries have done that. France had a League Cup and then went, nah, we should probably get rid of this. Like, there's just, th you know, like, that you just do that. Okay, they got a red. We have to win this game. <laughs> we we have to win this game, don't we? I mean, we we have to. Who's getting bad ratings? All right, George is just having an absolute stinker. We'll get an Echo Romo in. Uh, Indrik is also having a generational stinker. We're gonna get Mikey Moore in. Uh, I'm going to get Yanis Constantelius in, run him here. I'm going to run Seca and Konda. Like, we're we're going absolutely all out offense. We're, I don't even care what our defensive shape looks like right now. I don't even care. We brought in more Romo and Constantelius. I don't give a hoot. You hear that? I don't give a hoot. Oh, get a touch. Who's that? Kazu? Nah, that's a tough ask. Lewis. Oh, kept it alive. Rico again. You got like eight dudes in the box here. Moore? There you go. It's Mikey Moore. And it's 1 1. Danger is a Bruin for Nottingham Forest now. We are, I mean, we're already sending it, but we are going to be sending it so much more thank you mikey freaking more any updates i mean i know they haven't scored we're just waiting for pens pilsen and uh servette if they played 400 minutes nobody would win did we beat bradford yes we are in the league cup semi-final i think i i think the biggest cure to the ills is to limit the number of preseason tours and matches teams can play and get rid of league cup in england because england obviously particularly has a problem Well, they'll never do that because the preseason stuff makes more money. There, there really is no scenario where I see them ever reducing the number of matches being played. I just don't. There, there is absolutely no body in the game that's going to willingly take less money. Oh, that's off. Surely that's off. He missed it anyways. Goodness gracious. Lays, thank you for the 32 months. Like, I'm not saying preseason tours should be illegal. I'm saying the amount and the, like, the raw amount of them that they do is ridiculous. Oh, Inacio. Constantelli is yes. dang it, dude. Smokestack, thank you for the 25 months, brother. Appreciate you supporting the stream, dude. So come on, you Spurs. Well, you know, we do need a goal here. Mikey Moore. Uh, chip ball, Romo. Yo. Let me survey my bench. Contemplativity. We have a ball of nerves in every single uh, player that I have not brought in yet. So I'm thinking we just don't. The shout has expired, so we get a real assessment of what everybody's doing. We got a few yellow cards we're dealing with. We've got, I'm going to go with uh, KO Day. Is going to get Doig. And then Apprehensive Bellarmino Seca is going to come out for Ginny's Rejevich. And, and that's it. Okay, I have faith in you. Oh, for two, really? Okay, uh, sure. We put too much pressure on the team, obviously, in the pregame nonsense. Okay. I'm going to up the directness a little bit. Uh, yeah, keep it up. Keep it up. Keep playing. Mad aggression, dude. 
Mad aggression. They should not have the ball comfortably anywhere on the field. Freaking changes lurking in the top right for whatever, four minutes. Those were just the change to go more direct. It wasn't like a, oh, now we've, now we've glitched to full match. Glorious. I've never tried this. It probably won't work, but we are uh we're still not creating anything, so I really want to uh I really want to send it. I want to somehow send it even more. It'll literally reset everything. All right, boys, come on. That's my ball. That's Rico Lewis's ball right there. Mikey Moore. Constantelius. Oh, everybody's up there. It's KO day. Oh, Rosales, come on, lad. Come on, Mikey. Come on, Mikey. That's a corner. That's a, I, I'd even send the freaking goalkeeper, dude. I, I don't even care. That's a corner. Let's go. Now we've been amazing at pulling goals out. Um, we've been amazing at pulling goals out all season. Uh, we were really aggressive really early. We felt like we had an opportunity there, and uh, we fumbled it. Uh, at Manchester City, it looks like they um, have not uh, played yet, so they've plummeted. But United and Newcastle did win, so they've closed on us a little bit. That's a really disappointing draw against a not very good team that had a red card for most of the second half. City and Liverpool just drew, which better than them winning. So, Bayern gets their eight million. Dang it, dude! So, language of scout speaks when scouting a region, nation important. Uh, yes, yeah. That uh, that's just an adaptability mechanic in the game. That's always going to be important. Uh, yeah, that's not going to change. You know, you know why we didn't get a result there? There was one reason. I put too much pressure on them in the pregame talk. Everybody was we we that we were playing that like it was the Champions League final. We were freaking out. Everybody was apprehensive and nervous. Nerves are all over the place. Yeah, it was uh that that sucked. 
I know we're top of the league, but you want you want to lose points in like an away match against you know Liverpool or something. You don't want to lose it in an away match against uh, a bad team, and we just threw a bad team out there today. Couldn't create enough. We're too nervous to exhibit our creativity. Stop giving me optional future fees, all right? Liverpool made an offer for Pape Matasar, and we would get $24 million. I think I'm going to say yes to that. Liverpool won Pape Matasar. I think I'm going to say yes to that. The intermediary takes a million, but I'm saying yes to that. A new signing press conference. Okay, we signed a youngster from the Norwegian League. I think this is a little long-winded, guys. Yeah. We actually have an offer we think Pape Matasar is going to be willing to accept. Huge. That'll pay us back for all of the uh, freaking fees or whatever that we just paid out from all the stupid transfer deals that we'd done already. We need, I need to look at our targets, though. We have the money. We don't need to wait to sell in order to buy here. I need to have a look at our targets. So there's Lorish Kabongo. There's, of course, Mujahid Kaya and Kieran Tell and Aster Franks, Florin Dragan, Jonas Erbig. Belchior Canilio. I uh, that dude is amazing. Would he set off the thing? No, he is not under 21 player abroad. This guy's I, I know every single player we're looking at is, a, is an attacking midfielder that can do nothing else. But that guy is amazing. Fisher, thank you for the 36 months. <laughs> Congrats on your three years, dude. I appreciate you supporting the stream. All right, the afternoon matches have kicked off as well. I picked Liverpool, Roma, Leverkusen, and Atlanta. 1-1 against Sporting. Leverkusen's 2-2 here. Brighton needs an all-time comeback. Liverpool is at home and should be fine. Pills and Inservet are still going. We've got Villa and Ajax just kicked off. Brugge, Mold going at it. I, I said Brugge is going to win, uh, but Mold is up a goal. Of course, Villa and Ajax after that nightmare of a first leg, and Amsterdam are still nil-nil. Or, yeah. Lille and Stumgratz and Maccabi Tel Aviv and Olympiacos. Tel Aviv with a three-goal advantage, now playing at home. Lille up three goals on Stumgratz from Austria, so that's probably toast. Afternoon for me, night for you, if you're wondering why the hell I just said afternoon. The time difference is a thing. I think we... Ooh, but I want Mujahid Kaya. Do I, though? We do already have one German front man. Problem is, this guy isn't a great finisher. But I'm a believer that that might not actually be that valuable. Randy, thank you for the tier one, dude. 35 months. And you're about to hit that Z bacon next month, my dude. Cabral. Thank you for the prime. Oh, they're playing in Serbia. Nice. Are you going to get a new goalie? Uh, yeah, I mean, we have Vicario and Kelleher. Both their contracts run out at the end of the year. I think we're going to let them both go and just figure out a new goalkeeper situation if we're coaching here next year. I know his adaptability is bad, but have you seen his skills? 
And then, of course, there is the explosive Brazilian Calvin, a classic out-and-out -out wing. Also has terrible adaptability, bad teamwork, bad uh, consistency as well. But, you know, he's a winger. That kind of suits him almost. Got a release clause of $18.75 million and will be our last foreign uh, under-21 signing. Yes. Mojaid Kaya will win you the league. Well, let's compare him to Skoda right now. Simone Skoda. Liverpool's up 1-0. It's already Darwin time. Oh, thank goodness it's already Darwin time. What would I do without my Darwin time? I, you know, chat, I'm thinking that maybe just it's a good idea to make this pick up. This guy works his tail off. He works his tail off. Two nil. Oh my dude, come on. That aggregate's gonna be like twelve to one. It's already seven one on aggregate. We're nine minutes into the match. We have no goals in any Pilsen and Servette have played like four hours and nobody scored. They're about to go to pens. Well, yeah, Leverkusen's gotta they have to win. You're at home and all you have to do is beat Karabakh. They have to win. They they muscled the draw out in Azerbaijan. They've gotta win. We also don't know if we can get him. I mean, PSG is also trying to sign him. So there, there is also Kieran Tull. Sebastian Kirschbaum, a worse version of Mujahid Kaya. Sime Ianovic, who's got a lot of developing to do, but he has cracked the national team. And then Dion Drena Kakulovic. Imagine if their first line, I mean, it almost was to Karabag in Baku. They scored in stoppage time to not lose that game. All right. Three nil. Oh, dude, why? They sub out Salah now, dude. Just rest him. Why are they even? Why are they even out there, dude? Just sub him out. Sub him out in the fifteenth minute. The game is over. It's eight one on aggregate. You can play the U twenty ones and they wouldn't lose seven nil. All right, let's see if we can get Mujahid Kaya. I'm taking a big swing. Let's, he wants. He wants the cash. He wants the cash. I'll tell you what. You you be stepping into the team. Playing like a superstar right now. Yearly salary raise, no. Sell-on fee percentage, no. Please don't instantly reject this. Because you were, you were trying to include a lot of money. Division uh, team of the year, top goal scorer, I'll give you $1.3 million if you get top goals. Assist bonus, 49 But he wants real serious, uh, real serious wage here. International cap bonus, uh, they're pushing that real high. I'll give you 33000 every time you play for Germany, which will probably be a lot. Relegation release clause is going to be included. I'm not planning on getting relegated anytime soon, but just to add some value to the contract, just don't reject it instantly. Thank you. Uh, you are patient, and I feel like we're going to be able to hammer out a good deal. I'm thinking like 14.3 base salary. I'm thinking like 14.3 base salary. I'm thinking like 14.3 base salary. That's 18 million, 18 million, 18 and a half million total wage impact, which is less than Santiago Jimenez. I will take that. Oh, the comeback is on. Olympiacos has scored. The comeback is so on. Constantinos Fortunas. Has made it 4-2 on aggregate. Maccabi Tel Aviv playing in Serbia. That's their home match. 
after a 4-1 win in Greece. You know there's good traveling support there as well. Oh, Chelsea are going for Joao Martins. No, I don't want to play against him. <gasps> Bayern are here for Mujahid Kaya. Everybody wants Mujahid Kaya. Ashley Phillips, he's got no interest in joining Hoffenheim. Well, I've got an interest in seeing how much Hoffenheim would be willing to pay. That I have an interest in. So we did just sign that wonder kid from... Uh, Yeah, that's fine. We did just sign that wonder kid from Norway. He's not quite ready for the first team, but if he needs to be, he can be. Why low bomb? PSG also has an offering. Uh, you might be able to talk me into upping it a bit, but I believe that he would... I believe the decision will be made off playing time and who he wants to play for, personally. Nobody interested in making an offer for Babati? I tell you what, I'd take $40 million. I'm going to go to a really reasonable price right away. Oh, damaged foot for Rico Lewis. Can I not just have both of my... Uh, Why did I get that feedback immediately? Doesn't it normally take a couple of days? I mean, you got to at least go ask everybody. Yeah, Norway Wondergit, he is more of a midfielder. All right. I like it here. Yeah, you're getting paid to do nothing. Obviously, you like it here. 4-0. Oh, this is fun. I think, I think Sparta Prague's having a really good time. This is Sparta Prague's worst nightmare. Pilsen and Servette are about to go to Pens in the Conference League. So that is, that's the real moment on the edge right now. Hopefully we can make this really comfy. This is just Sunderland and uh, FA Cup. Uh, Coyote, looks like you're just playing all the time now because Rico Lewis damaged his foot. Bro, I know the feeling. Uh, Marde, Marcelo Enrique, Regevich, Shingo Eberts. Do, 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 oh God. Javi Guerra. Yeah, you're getting a nice break, dude, aren't you? Uh, Chagichi, Constantelius, Indrik. We get Doig for England, McAvoy, Vuskovic, Rosales, Coyote, Kelleher, Regevich, Eberts. The body, we're just waiting to move him. Bellarmino, Seca out for Mass and Tuano. Konda's on his way to freaking Japan. Whatever. Didn't even ask me for my opinion. All right. Oh, they've got the, uh, is that the guy that didn't want to play for the U.S.? Nathaniel Brown, I think it is. Put on a worthy display, lads. A worthy display after that brutal draw. Is Norway kid need registration? Now nah, he's under 21. He's like 18, kind of an anchor man midfielder, but doesn't really have great size for center back, but he can play it. When do you call Mercy if you're Liverpool? I'm not kidding when I say that I would go out there and sub out all of my first team players like 20 minutes in. I'd use four subs. I didn't even know why he started them, but I would sub them out. I mean, you're, you're Liverpool. You got a match to play like every three or four days. No sense in burning those guys out playing against Sparta Prague. When you have a 9-1 aggregate advantage.
Oh, yo, I thought that was actually a good shot. Oh, we did. Oh, my goodness. It's our first FA Cup in like a week of streams, so pardon me, but you are correct. Please rise and remove your caps for the performance of the FA Cup anthem. It's the FA Cup. The FA Cup. The FA Cup. You may be seated. It's been described by the New York Times as hauntingly beautiful. The FA Cup anthem, now we can win. We're not allowed to score until the anthem is performed. Well, let's go. An Echo Romo. And Simone. Let's go more. Play it. No, you got to play him. Play the ball on the floor into the space. Gamera was there. Luke, thank you for the two months. Ollie Watkins, Ollie Watkins just got hurt. Oh, dude's going to miss the call up. We were just, we were looking at the England team. He's going to miss the call up. Oh, nice pass by Gamera in Echo Romo. The account is open, baby. Account is open. Let's rock and roll. Great pass by Gamera. Tidy finishing by Ineco Romo. Liverpool 4-0. Oh, we know. We've been tracking each goal. Olympiacos trying to mount the comeback. Ineco. Ah, yeah, yeah. The keeper's acting like this ball's just going wide and then it just goes in. That's one of the weirdest goals I've ever seen. I, I, he's acting like the ball's going wide. It's a head, defensive header from them at the edge of the box. I mean, it's raining, so it's slick out there. It just kind of skips off his head towards the corner. And coming just, I thought it was going wide to the post. It just lets it, lets it go in. 2-0. Uh, easy enough. Okay. Regevich, Coyote, Skoda, the garbage man is there again. The Italian garbage man has another one. And it's 3-0 Spurs in 15 minutes in the FA Cup. do 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 Tottenham Hotspur with a resounding early volley of three straight goals against Sunderland. Well, that would be mine. Thank you very much. An Echo Romo on the way. Uh, uh. 
Time to sub your four best players. Joke's on them. I already rotated my entire first team. They didn't even start the game. These are the backups. This is the second. It's not even the best second team. Like Hector Gamer is playing attacking midfield today. So I did it. I, I did the 4D chess move of substituting my four best players before the match even started. For real 4D chess. More! 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 I want more! <laughs> Absolutely outstanding for Mikey Moore. And the championship side, Sunderland, have been overrolled in the opening half against Tottenham. The Premier League leaders, spurred on by Mikey Moore, the academy graduate, who continues to perform well all season. Oh, Mikey Moore, Simone Skoda. Is he going to score a goal of actual quality? No. Never. That would ruin his meme. Oh, that's my ball. Thank you. Rejevich, Eberts, Gamera, Romo. Oh, how about uh, Simone Skoda? Another one-touch masterpiece for Simone. We are in the uh, 27th minute of play right now. You thought I was kidding. I am. I was not. I am going to sub in Ashley Phillips for Michael Coyote in the 27th minute. Just because. It's 5 0. Coyote's got to. Uh, Rico Lewis is out for the next two weeks. We, Coyote has to start. So, uh, 27th minute. I'm backing it. You know, I'm backing up all that stuff I was talking. Now, the only issue would be in the game if I have to explain it to him, like if he gets upset. Like, you had the match one, I needed you for other uh, matches. But that might not be an option on a sub that early in the game. All right, that penalty shootout. How's it going? Servette and Pilsen. I'm assuming somebody, if they missed all of them. Oh, dude, Servette missed two of the first three. Pilsen's got it made in the shade. They're up 3-1. Check side Victoria Pilsen for a Conference League quarterfinal. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, Mikey Moore. Oh, more. So the Swiss team is out. Pills into the quarters as long as nothing wild happens. Dude, it literally is on key. I we we've, we've been on key. We're just that good. Oh, oh, it's got to be. It's an Echo Romo. So much composure. Servette missed again. Villa scored. Well, there you go. That's uh, that's one nil on aggregate to Aston Villa over Ajax to get to the quarterfinal. And Pilsen is going to the quarterfinal of the Conference League, despite not scoring in either leg of the competition in this round of 16 tie. Nil-nil after two legs. Pilsen wins on penalties. Liverpool 4-0, no other goals in the Europa League, which means Karabag is right now hanging on against uh, Leverkusen. And no hot start for Brighton to try and overturn Roma's dominance. Yeah, it was a good first half, guys, believe it or not. Call off the dogs? I, I don't know. We we are capable of really... Oh, my goodness. We are capable of really blowing out teams, dude. 
we are capable of really blowing out teams. Chinny's Regimich makes it 7-0. They were literally telling me to train. It doesn't take long shots on that guy. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Andrew, thank you for the three months. I appreciate you supporting the stream. In a video lately, you said you had an issue with Philly, and I must know why. I'm sorry. I just don't like Philly uh, sports teams. I don't like a single Philadelphia sports team. They all suck. Their fans are all mean, and I hope they lose. And watching the Tampa Bay Buccaneers beat the Philadelphia Eagles in the playoffs was therapeutic, and they deserved it. Comebacks on. I have been saved on my clean sheet bonus here. That's okay. I still love you. Yeah, I still, uh, you know, I, I, I've got nothing against you, Andrew. I just, uh, you know, Philadelphia sports teams don't like him. Where's, uh, like, Marcelo Enrique, Phillips? You know, uh, let's get Ashley out there. We'll, we'll rock him in. And uh, Franco Mastantuano. Going to come striding in for uh, Mikey Moore here. Hey, Franco, uh, show off those mad skills, brother. Show me something great. Do I hate the Glazers as a Bucs fan? Not as much as United fans do, because they have won we've won two Super Bowls with the Glazers. Um, but, yeah, they're not good owners. I think everybody knows that. Not very communicative. Um, but they have hired a very good general manager with the Bucs. Um, and he, so and they've just kind of let him do his thing. I think they're mostly distracted with uh, with United. Nice, Radjevic. I'm not from Philly. Just have a Phillies baseball shirt I got when I was seven. Oh yeah, Philly sports fans are just the woke. Uh, they they they're awful. I got a plenty of terrible experiences going to Buccaneers games where like Phillies road fans are just un or not uh, Eagles road fans. Just insufferable. And you want to know something interesting? Tampa Bay Buccaneers, we might lose a lot of games. We got more Super Bowls than the, than the friggin' Eagles have. So they can, they can wallow in that. We got more Super Bowls than they do, and we suck. So what's that say about them? I don't, the Phillies, I would say the Phillies are the team that I... I have the least beef with the Flyers awful really annoying um and the 76ers like the old James Harden Ben Simmons thing really annoying I don't really have a huge issue with the Phillies they beat the Rays in the in the World Series which sucked but I I didn't I didn't have as many hateable moments as every other uh team how do I think the Rays will do this year same thing we do every year have an amazing regular season where we unearth five new incredibly talented players, then lose in the first year of the playoffs because, I uh, I don't know, the analytics just let us down. Whatever statistically probable just doesn't happen when it's supposed to. Do the same thing we always do. I hope that's not true, but Kelleher seemed anxious. I, I, I just wanted to keep the intensity up here as we started to get complacent towards the end of that. Obviously, they scored two straight goals, guys. Now, you know, the reason Philadelphia Eagles fans in particular are so awful is because they're not like the Eagles historically. They have all this history, and it's not good. Like, they've lost so many Super Bowls, and, you know, they just, like, they're just annoying. Like, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you don't hear us pipe it up all the time. We have two Super Bowls. Two! Two! The body mandatory future fee may become unsettled if not allowed to speak to Everton. All right, you're going to need to go way further up than that. Can you give me, like, actual money, dude? No? You're just going to up whatever you're paying over there? Like, that matters to me? No. Uh, his preferred destination would be Manchester United. I'm going to just go crazy here. He won't get upset if we do it. It just was a preferred destination thing. So that's okay.
constantly booing their players. Yeah, no, they're just they're just really uh they're they're oh yeah, they're not the only fans like that. The Dallas Cowboys are in that category. Right? I uh, where they're just super annoying. Um the Steelers, they always annoy me. You're not part of my plans. Okay, let's do it. Good. Find a team, Santi. Find a freaking team. We need to find a uh, a transfer deal. It works. All right. <laughs> Come on. Higher intermediary. Uh, dude, no, uh, no upfront offers. Are we serious right now? Yeah, I, I see that. I see that. Although I think uh, Flyers fans are worse than Penguins fans, the hockey side of things. Although you said Ollie Watkins got hurt. Although that meant he was just like obviously already off. But now he, he I guess he wasn't hurt that bad if he played a little bit and then had to stop. Ruben Zabinden sets retirement date. You know what? I am going to go. I, uh, hold on. I can honor Harold was player of the match. Love to hear it. Uh, Babati intermediary fee. Come on. What's it? A $30 million offer from Salzburg. That's optional. I don't want anything that's optional. I want something that's going to be pretty guaranteed. Greasy Dave. Thank you for the six months though. I appreciate it. Name checks out. Sporting scored. Oh, that breaks the deadlock. Good year for Portugal. Sporting up 2-1 on aggregate over Atalanta, who's been brilliant in Europe. Karabag is still hanging on against Leverkusen. Brighton's basically done. They're down four. They needed a hot start that they have not gotten. Olympiakos is still down two goals on aggregate to Maccabi Tel Aviv. Uh, Lille still up 3-0. Uh, Mold still up a goal on Brugge. And Aston Villa's up 1-0 on Ajax. That's on aggregate, not just in the match. But a big goal for sporting. And one of those ties that could go either way. I said Atlanta was going to win, which means bet sporting. Hammer sporting. Oh, yeah. Change contract offer. Hi. I don't want you to not sign for me because we don't give you enough money. So I'm going to up the offer to 17 and a half. 17, 5, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 17, uh, 17.5. It's 21.84 million on the uh on the budget. I, I don't we have the money to offer around. I don't want to lose out because we aren't offering it. I don't want to go crazy and lock ourselves into an absolutely monster contract, but I will uh I'll do what I believe is necessary to help us out, because we are competing with Bayern and PSG for that signature. Please. It's amazing how quickly that shortlist changes, dude, once the team gets so good. So many guys just start getting cut. Gabri Viega or Gabri Vega. Cultured midfielder. God, that's just so saucy. The Sarban adopted. Oh, Olympiakos. You're shouting it's a second goal for the Greeks. It's been a great day for the Greeks. We already saw Pauk Thessaloniki turn down or turn around a 2-0 a deficit in the home leg. Olympiakos lost 4-1 at home and has already made it 4-3. This is FA Cup draw. It's still really early rounds, so we're just going to go ahead and skip it. We got Brighton away, dude. It's the fourth round. We got Brighton away. What in the nonsense? 
Brighton away. Oh, Doom Sage, thank you for the nine months. Thank you for supporting the stream. Nunez with a ridiculous match. Well, you know, he's got to keep up appearances. I know he's like a world-class striker now, but you got to keep up appearances, all right? It'd be absurd if he just went out there and started bagging goals all over the place. Like, you know, people, people, be, people would know that he was a fraud. The body sell player? Yeah, I'm working on it, okay? Nobody wants him. All right, I'm going to lock in a mandatory future fee of $40 million, but just offer out a loan. I don't, I've never tried that. People also seem to be interested in, like, a loan here. I'm going to try a mandatory future fee of $30 million just to get Isaac Babati off the team. We'll try that offer out. All right, Everton, Newcastle. Ooh, Everton would be a huge upset, and they have made it 1-1 going to Newcastle. In the uh, League Cup semifinal, which we're going to settle either side of this league match we've got. Chance to win a first domestic trophy in England in 23 years as we play our way to the League Cup semifinal. Brighton comeback. Oh, they did score? Well, that keeps the hope alive. Who got the goal? Danny Welbeck, obviously. They need three more to send it even to extra time without reply. But hey... You needed to start somewhere. A journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. All right, 47 million for a world-class center back in his prime feels a little insulting. I'll try 135. You say no, he won't get upset, so that's fine. Optional future fee. Uh, you know, no, I'm, I'm saying no. I'm saying no. Gak oh, Gakpo left. Gakpo's agreed to a, uh, a deal at the end of his contract to go play in Saudi Arabia for $38 million a year. Who can blame him? Eves Basuma's about to head there. Eves Basuma's headed off. Oh, Bentoncourt. Yeah, that's awkward. We did sell him there. You know that, right? Like, I know you're putting him on this list because you think he'd be a decent backup option, but we did sell him there. Joshua Xerxes. I remember a world where he was, like, the highest potential striker you could get in the game. Really fits and starts for him in his actual career. Joel Annie. I right. Mass and Tuano. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to talk him out of this again. Turu's not going to be able to do it. Hi. Uh, uh, okay. I look, I'm okay with selling you. I think we'll get decent money. You have, you know, 10 appearances for Argentina. You're 23 years old. Transfer listed by request. Uh, 50 is probably high. 40 is not high. Come on. Way above his value. Oh my, what? 26 and a half. That's disgusting. Fine. We'll see if we can get it in cash out right away. That'll go right into our transfer budget and help. But chat, that is, uh, well, did we not save all day? Oh, no, I had the wrong save on. So we actually haven't saved all freaking day. Let's get that save in. Because we played a million matches. We did well with it. We are going to raid somebody, so stick around for that. Uh, but that's it for the stream today. I love you guys. Fist pump. Thank you so much for all the subs. Vagalnord, thank you for supporting the stream with the tier one. Um, we talked about a lot of fun stuff. Even though Twitch literally torpedoed the stream halfway through, I really appreciate you guys that stuck around once it came back. Um, and I always enjoy these days where we're like tracking and reacting to uh, to what's happening. Sparta Prague did just score, by the way. So haters be damned. Haters be damned. Sparta Prague is coming. Comeback is on. Dude, it's only 9-2 on aggregate. Seven goals is easy. Seven goals is easy. They've definitely got it. They have definitely got it. All right, I found our raid target. I have found our raid target. 
Do you, good sirs of the chat, have a copy pasta to deploy on said raid? It's funny you're attempting to sell someone who's a player emote for redemption. Yeah, time's still working on that. That'd be, uh, I guess we would refund it if we're unable to, if we're, if we're able to sell him. We would refund that redemption. Pasta? Do we, do we have a copy pasta? Chat, we need a copy pasta. Somebody's got to find it. I can't always be there. You, I mean, honestly, you guys almost always find it. This is your moment. Your moment. I'm just going to send you guys on the raid, and you won't even know what to say. You'll just be sitting there all awkwardly. You'll just be sitting there all awkwardly. Love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Hopefully, we make that massive signing that we're, we're, we're lining up, but I'll be here tomorrow. I'll see you guys in my last stream until the half marathon, which is awesome. Bye, guys. All right, word of the day, brother. Emulate. Emulate. E-M-U-L-A-T-E. -E. If you emulate someone or something, you try to be like that person or thing. The word is used especially when one is trying to equal or surpass someone in accomplishment or achievement. It's a good word. Uh, she grew up emulating her sports heroes, or younger children will often try to emulate the behavior of their older siblings. See you at the end of another stream for the other word of the day.